It's a team that is as efficient as a well-oiled machine. USC has done just what most expected this year, impressively continuing its quest toward a third straight national title. Matt Leinert has actually improved on his Heisman season. He's been having no trouble finding all his offensive weapons. And combined with Reggie Bush's ability to make people wonder if he's human, the Trojans seem impossible to stop. But before USC books its Rose Bowl tickets, the Bulldogs from Fresno State continue their anyone, anytime, anywhere philosophy and travel to L.A. trying to prove their 8-1 record is no fluke. The Bulldogs and the nation's number one, next. Absolutely Chamber of Commerce weather on this Saturday night here at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. This is the most anticipated game maybe ever in the Central Valley of California and for the nation's number one ranked team, the USC Trojans. Fresno State, just kind of this pesty gnat that's right in their face and they hope won't go away for two or three hours. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. You know my partner, Petros Papadakis. Jimmy Watson's with us also down on the field. And Petros, we've seen USC two, three times this year. We know how good they are. Maybe the best team ever in college football. We've heard a lot of bravado from all the coaches playing against them. We heard it again from Fresno State, and yet these guys really believe they can win. Well, why show up if you don't believe you can win? Pat Hill, the Fresno State coach, has got these guys believing they can win. It's not a matter of them just coming out here and giving USC a good game. They expect to win this game. They want to win this game. How is USC in the Coliseum? pretty near unbeatable. They haven't lost here since 2001, but at the same time, Fresno State is a scrappy team, an angry team, almost a violent football team, and they're going to play that brand of football. They've only lost one game this year. It was a game they could have won up at Oregon. They got another Pac-10 squad. They got USC. They got the game they wanted. We'll see what happens. It's going to be crazy tonight in the Coliseum. I think it's going to be great fun. And all of that said, this USC team, I really believe the best offensive football team I have ever seen. I still think they're going to get all they want from those guys from Fresno. What a game. We're coming back. Fresno State ranked 16. Only the one loss. A game that they sincerely feel they should have won. They were at 17. A well-coached football team that has the ability to play in the moment. They don't games, of course, in a couple of weeks. They're taking on UCLA. They play in the moment. They know how to play, play in and play out. They know how to prepare. For Pete Carroll not only coaches these players, he coaches his coach. And Pat Hill on the other sideline, another one of those guys you just can't help but like. Oh, you can't help but like. But believe him when he talks to you. He looks in your eyes, and it's like he... He has really not only rallied the city of Fresno behind this football team, but the entire San Juan has gotten behind what the Fresno State Bulldogs are doing. Can't help but respect. They play hard. They always have good quarterbacks. Paul Pinniger back up there with Billy Bull. Fullback, Dwayne Jarrett, Steve Smith, pick your poison, Fred Davis gets the start at tight end, and we may see more of him today as far as being involved in the offense. They want to get him involved. A shift behind the Trojans. Something I haven't seen before. Bush the tail. Play fake, line the throw. Throws this time for Curtin. Curtin at the 40-yard line, and is stopped as he crosses the 40 by Josh Shirley. Fresno State defensively, and they fly around. They'll put a hat on you. Garrett McIntyre, an All-American candidate, and an outstanding player, former walk-on with Shirley Leonard and Tyler Klutz. The linebackers, Dwayne Andrews is the leader of that linebacker pack, and in fact, one of the leaders of this team in general. And the secondary, good cover guys at the corners in McCauley and Marshall. Josh Shirley and Tyron Culver, the safety. Second down and three. Liner to go up again, pump fake this time. Throwing deep and overthrows Jarrett at about the 23 yard line. Good coverage this time by Tyrone Colbert. We expected USC to come out and pass the ball early. They want to pass the ball, get some play fakes going, really loosen things up for that rush. You start seeing USC in the second and third quarter of games 
bring in Lindale White and start pounding people. This Fresno defense, tough, Barry, but undersized against the Trojans, and they could get worn down. That's a real fact. Third down and three. And I think it's going to go against this. See, I believe, I don't want to guess too much, but it looked to me like Winston Justice might have gotten out of his stance early. And we've seen USC come out in the first half of games struggling a little bit. And when they are struggling, they do get penalties. I know it's very early, but these little offsides penalties, stuff like that hurts USC in the first half. And it is going to go against Fresno Prior State. the snap, offside, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. That's something that Pat Hill absolutely uh, insisted not happen, and that is those before the snap penalties. He calls them administrative penalties. Too many guys on the field, offsides, encroachment, stuff like that, stuff you can control. I mean, once the ball is snapped, that's combine bat. Pat Hill's okay with that. He doesn't like the administrative penalty. He's done a little fumble. And Leinert finds some room, throws for Jarrett, and it's almost intercepted. What a big time play by Culver. Had Culver not gotten a hand on that ball, that was a touchdown. That was a touchdown, but Tyrone Culver jumping out of his shoes and slapping that ball down. He's got five pass breakups coming into this game. That's number six. Very nice play by Tyrone Culver, and you're right. That was a touchdown, beautifully thrown ball. Just a well-timed jump by Culver. Dwayne Jarrett had gotten position on him. Dwayne Jarrett already a thousand yard receiver. What a season he has had so much for the sophomore slump. Tyrone Culver saving his team there. Second out of 10, ball at the 48 yard. Smith comes in motion, and Leonard's gonna go up again. Over the middle, throws underneath. The ball is caught by Steve Smith and dropped. So it'll be third and 10. Third down and 10, now that's the situation that the Bulldogs, well needless to say, want to get USC in, but they feel that it's imperative to do it and do it relatively often. If they can get USC in third and long, if they can keep them from getting five, six, seven yards on first down, they like their chances. They say USC's a lot better when they're third and long as opposed to third and two. Or not in third down at all. Still effective in third down. You saw those numbers, 54%, six defensive backs five-man rush this time on line if they don't get to him and the throw is caught by Smith and that's going to be close it'll depend on the mark and I think they will give him enough for the first down inside the 42-yard line Marcus McCauley covering offensive line of USC doing a good job that time Fresno State doesn't like to blitz too much they like to mix it up they like to pick their spots with the blitz that time they brought a corner Raymond Washington but it was picked up well by Reggie Bush check him out he recognizes that corner blitz, gets outside, makes the block, and Leinart has some time, sits back there and tosses it to Steve Smith, sure-handed guy. At the 41-yard line, Trojans with the first down, very effective in this first drive thus far. Straight back Leinart again, and run the ball yet, pump fake, going for it all, got him in, that's Jarrett. Touchdown. And he dropped it. Caught it, had it, dropped it. That's the second drop in this series. Richard Marshall was beaten on the coverage. Just gave Dwayne Jarrett the, sh the shove. Dwayne Jarrett really can kick it into gear when he sees that ball in the air. This is a big guy running a route, too. Double move route. Then he goes straight to the end zone. The ball's perfect. Richard Marshall beaten on the play. Gets the shove in there. But that's just a drop ball by Dwayne Jarrett. Second and ten. Bulldogs dodge a bullet. A quick pass this time for Smith. And Smith cannot get out of the grasp of Richard Marshall. And that is, again, something that Pat Hill said. We are pretty good tacklers. You saw a good example of it right there. Well, sometimes when teams play against USC, they're intimidated. They're intimidated playing up against this offense because you know the names. A lot of these guys are household names. They got a receiver with 1,000 yards. Steve Smith, almost 1,000 yards. Reggie Bush, Lindale White, 1,000-yard guys. But they play tough defense. Look at those numbers in the whack. These guys will not be intimidated. They will tackle. Third and long, six defensive backs again for Fresno. Four-man rush this time. Leiter airs it out from the four. 
It's out of bounds. So now it'll be fourth down, and this is a situation where Pete Carroll in the past has gone for it. Now, whether or not he does here remains to be seen. It does not appear he will. And you see USC coming out, not taking advantage of the size they have on the offensive line, not using Lindale White, not using Reggie Bush between the tackles. They were resigned to throw it every single time on that drive, sort of trying to out-finesse Fresno State and loosen them up. I'm not sure. Maybe you should be physical with a physical team. This is a short kick. Jennings fair catch at the 18-yard line. 23-yard kick. No return. And Fresno gets the stop that they wanted, and now we'll start at the 18-yard line. The lineups for Fresno State, Paul Pittaker, he is a senior, he's experienced, you can see he's won 32 out of the 41 games he has started at Fresno State. Wendell Mathis, serviceable running back, began his career at UCLA. Virtue, everybody loves, true fullback. Williams, Jennings, McDonald, they spread the ball around. Nobody's got a ton of catches. Offensive line, one of the strengths of this Fresno team, much as it is of USC. Give this to Mathis. Mathis on first down is crushed after a game of about three. Defensively, for the USC Trojans, and needless to say, they are very talented. Frosty Rucker leading that defensive line. Solid all across. Linebackers are a strength. Lua has come up big. The freshman, Brian Cushing, and the sophomore, Keith Rivers. In the secondary, Terrell Thomas went down early in the year, but Josh Pinkert stepped up and has played big time. Strong at the corner, strong at the safety. There just are no holes in this USC defense. Rivera in at running back. Two yards on first down. Second and eight. Pinnegar will go up for the first time. Throws caught this time by Fernandez. And Fresno State will have the first down at the 35-yard line. Joe Fernandez, the son of Manny Fernandez, spent a few years in the NFL with the Oakland Raiders. A Raider hero. You know him, don't you? And Joe is a pretty efficient receiver. That's his 21st reception of the year, only two touchdowns. But they like to spread the ball around. Most important for Pat Hill's team, completion. Completion's a positive place offensively. Catch the ball, get four yards of pop when you run the ball, keep that ball away from USC and that offense, and they'll frustrate the Trojans all the way into the fourth quarter if they can keep completing ball. They go out of the gun on first down at the 37. Pinnaker, quick toss this time. That's that little bubble screen. Williams makes the catch, has a first down and more, taking people with him across midfield. Big finally drags him down, but a terrific run after the catch by Paul Williams. And again, a 14. Paul Williams, probably the physical leader of this receiving core. Guy likes to fight for the ball, and he fights when he gets the ball. Darnell being a big guy and a good tackler, Oscar Lua has to come over and clean that play up. That's the kind of physical plays that Fresno State is going to make in this football game that's going to excite them and make them feel like they have a chance against number one. So that graphic had a 98-yard catch last week against a pretty good Boise team, which puts 70 on the board today. Pinnaker will go up again. Throws underneath. Fernandez has it at the 27-yard line. Well, right now, things going exactly the way Pat Hill drew him up. That's Josh Pinker a little bit slow to get up. Check this out. 22. How many wide receivers do you see in the backfield? That's Paul Williams lining up at fullback in the eye and taking it straight down the field. And he was open down to seam, Barry. But Pinnaker goes outside and gets the ball to Fernandez. Right now, Fresno State's game plan is working. At the 28-yard line. Give this time is to Mathis. And Mathis will get it inside the 25. Pick up a three. And again, when we talked to the coaching staff at Fresno State yesterday, they said, we'll take three. We'll take four. No problem. There's nothing wrong with that. Those are positive plays. And if you're getting three in the first quarter and you commit to that run, you have to hope that those third and fourth quarters are going to be 10-yard gains instead of three-yard gains as you wear that defense down. This is a physical Fresno team. Again, USC's defensive line much bigger than the Fresno State offensive line. Second down and seven. It's really second and, second and six. They gave him almost four yards. Here's a blitz. Pinnaker throws and had to unload the ball a little bit earlier than he wanted to because SC was coming right up the middle with Oscar Lua on a blitz. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis, Jimmy Watson on the field. 
16th ranked Fresno State, the number one ranked team in the land, and the winners of 32 in a row, the USC Trojans. 90,000 fans on hand here at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. And I'd say of that 90,000, what would you think, about 20,000 are Fresno fans? 19,000 Fresno fans. I think you counted them. There's a lot of them here. They rolled down in a caravan, not covered wagons, buses. Third down and six. Pinnaker checking off. Play fake, he'll go up, throws underneath on a screen this time. This is Rivera, gets it inside the 15. He'll have another Fresno first down at about the 12 yard line. Justin Wyatt on the stop, but the Bulldogs moving the football. Matt Rivera, not a big guy, 5'9", 195. Really their reception, third down type of back. You see him fake, wanted no part of Lawrence Jackson. Turns around, grabs that screen, and takes it down the field. Very efficient play call. Very nice movement by Pat Hill early in this football game. I think Pittaker checked to that, too. Sophisticated play to check to. First down at the 13-yard line. Out of the gun once more. Straight back, Pinnaker throws, end zone, Williams, dropped the ball. Had it in his hands, couldn't quite hang on. Scott Ware, nice job defensively. That's the type of play the Bulldogs are gonna have to make if they wanna stay in this game and win it. Here's Paul Williams, he's running a post route, kinda drifts into the route, doesn't come back to the ball at all, you know you're gonna get hit. Scott Ware putting an elbow right on his chin, and nice defense, really, but Paul Williams, got to have that catch if you're going to win this football game. And you make a good point. He did not come up to the ball. Waited for it. You can't wait for things in life, Barry. you got to go grab them. I've always said that. <laughs> Carpe diem. Spoken like a Trojan. <laughs> Pinnaker steps up, throws underneath. Ball is caught this time in the tight end. McDonald, he is... Fumble the ball in the end zone. Let's see what happens. They're going to say, I believe, that this is a Fresno touchdown. Let's see. One official signal touchdown. And I believe it's a touchdown for Fresno. Jameson recovered it. Here's another look. That's Devin McDonald. And he gets hit by Scott Ware. The ball pops up. And Jermaine Jamison is right there. It falls into his hands. He takes it in the end zone. What a bizarre play. Those are those things that you got to have. If you're going to have any chance against a team like USC, well, what an impressive drive for Fresno State, exactly as they would draw it up. You get a stop on USC, and then you drive 82 yards for the lead touchdown. by the new H3. Hummer, like nothing else. Fresno State, an 82-yard drive and an odd play to score the touchdown. The pass was complete to the tight end, McDonald. Coughed the football up, ball popped loose. Jamison gets it, touchdown, Bulldogs. Weird. Yeah, it was. Zimmerman drives this one. Big again at the five-yard line. Nailing at the 17. Let's take a look at that last play. You tell me what happened here, Pete. Well, Devin McDonald's a tight end, but he's lined up here in the backfield, and he's just going to slip out on a little outlet route. Check him out. Nothing's open downfield. Pinnaker buys some time, gets the ball to McDonald. Now he's got the ball. He's going downfield, gets hit, gives it up. That could have been disastrous for the Bulldogs. Instead, <laughs> Jermaine Jamison's there, ball pops into his hand, and the Bulldogs have a lot of confidence here in the first quarter. They came out and did what they had to do, punch USC right in the mouth, bloody up that pristine lip of the national champion. And incidentally, that kickoff, we'll talk a little more about it, that's by design. There's a quick hitch this time to Jared again. Excellent open field tackle by Richard Marshall. We take a Kyocera game blank here. It's by Goldberg Goldie. Hey, Barry, you know, number three Miami is rooting for Fresno State tonight to beat USC, but they need to take care of things themselves first. Fourth and one deep in Georgia Tech territory. The Canes are stuffed. They trail at home to Georgia Tech in the fourth, 14 to 10. 
you're right. They got to take care of their own business, and I'm sure Oregon sitting there rooting for Georgia Tech. There's Bush. Not much there. And for the first time, we go to the sideline, and Jim Watson, Jimmy. Barry, when you won 32 games in a row and two national titles, it's life in a fishbowl. 92,000, that's regular national TV audience. And supermodels lining the sideline, but this is the trophy that USC wants most. This is the BCS championship trophy, and for them, it serves as kind of history and inspiration. It's just 20 yards off the field, but remember, not every team in college football has a chance to win this trophy, and it's a bit of cruel irony that the BCS trophy is on Fresno State's sideline. <laughs> you have a pink tie, Pete? I have a pink shirt. Chicks love it. That was Ronnie's tongue for you. <laughs> with a catch for the first down at the 30-yard line. They brought that crystal thing around to the studio once. I was doing some studio work, and they you, brought you the crystal. You didn't fumble it, did you? They wouldn't let me touch it. Everybody else could touch it. They said, no, not you. Like I'm some kind of klutz or something. <laughs> like I don't have great hands. Like I'm not trustworthy. You held on to the ball pretty well. Sure. Fumbled once to lose a game. No big deal. That's only once. No one remembers that. First down Trojans at the 30-yard line. Got Lindale White in the game now, Barry. They fake Ryder, unloads it. And that should be grounded. I don't think he was out of the box, but we're not going to get a flag. What do you think here, Pete? He was supposed to have Fred Davis, the tight end who's starting tonight, in the flat. And he threw the ball out there like he would be there. Very dangerous throw. Garrett McIntyre. Very good player on the pressure, getting to Leonard early. USC's only run the ball once here, now in their second series. Not being physical at all with Fresno State, and it's hurting them. They're not getting yards on first down. Reggie Bush back in the ball game to tailback. Four comes in motion, hits to Bush. Bush steps outside, 35-40, 45. He's at the 40, one man has a shot, the 20, cuts back and tripped up at the five yard line. And that's Reggie Bush being Reggie Bush. What a beautiful play by Reggie Bush, just getting to the corner, getting his speed going. Tyrone Culver eventually makes the play. God, did he make Marcus McCulley look silly and what a nice block by this man. David Kurtman coming through on the pitch. Check this out. David Kurtman coming around, wonderful block on the corner, gets through that tackle. Once Reggie Bush hits the sidelines, not easy to catch him. Probably the fastest guy in the Pac-10, maybe the fastest in the country, and he knows how to run that football, especially out on the perimeter. USC, they got some momentum there. First and goal at the five-yard line. Lindell White gets the call, left side, he's in. Touchdown, Trojans. That was fast. Let's see. And how did they do it, Barry? They ran the football. They ran the football. They loosened them up a little with the pass. I didn't like it. You know, I don't like seeing too much passing. I like the way Fresno plays ball. They run the ball, and they're angry about it. USC can run the ball. They got that great offensive line, but there's so many guys to get the ball to. They give it to Reggie Bush. They get him on the corner, get down to the goal line. Little zone play to Lindale White, make it look easy. Mr. Outside and Mr. Inside. Remember those guys? I do remember them. Stay in your wedding? I was a child. <laughs> a young child. I was in the womb. Try for point is up and good. We are tied at 7, 7.25, remaining to be played here in the first quarter. What Fresno State doesn't want is a shootout. Looks like they might have it. A man to wear Everybody tie, knows right? I'm a fashion victim, you know? And Barry, you know, you take some risks with your clothing as well. Absolutely. Sometimes. But I'm not as good looking as you guys. Oh, that's not true. You know I'm the ugliest man on the broadcast. That's not true. That's all the animal <laughs> with you. Come on. You got all you look at. There's groupies everywhere in this group. <laughs> that's an incomplete pass. Was not a lateral. And let's go to uh, Jimmy Watson. Uh, right now, he's got an injury update, Waddy. Barry, as you guys know, the last thing that USC can afford is to lose another linebacker, especially of the caliber of Keith Rivers. It was a hamstring. And Petros, you know this is the same hamstring. It's been bothering him last couple of weeks. It's on the right side. So they brought him off. They tried to rub it out. That didn't work. He got on the bike. That didn't work. So they actually had him drop his pants, and they taped a bag of ice to the back of the hamstring. He says he's ready to go back in. That's a tough guy. 
Patrick Turner also left uh, earlier on a cart. Try to check on him, too. Trojans showing blitz here on second and ten. And Pinnegar changing the play. And they come with a blitz. And Pinnegar looking over the middle, and nobody there. And that's a little miscommunication, I think, between Devin McDonald and Paul Pinnegar. And that's a real chess match going on, not only between Pat Hill and Pete Carroll, but between Pinnegar and the USC defense. There you saw Scott Ware, the safety, fake like he was coming to blitz, then back off, Pinnegar changes the play, then he's back up, then he backs off, play changes again, then he ends up coming on the blitz, giving Berger a hit. Pinnegar gets the ball off and throws it to nobody. There's a lot going on out there before the ball's being snapped. It's the first time that Pinnegar has had two straight incompletions in this game. Now third and ten. Pinnegar out of the gun. Steps up, throws, caught by McDonald, and he's got it. First down. Pinnegar gunned that ball. He did. He knew he had to get it in there. Gets it right in the middle of the USC defense. Colin Ashton, Ryan Ting. On the coverage, nice play by Devin McDonald. Really beautiful throw by Pinnaker. Didn't take him long to pull the trigger, and McDonald holds on to that one, although barely had it between his legs by the time he hit the ground. Let's see what Pinnaker and the Bulldogs have done. First down at the 44-yard line of USC. Give this time to Mathis. Mathis gets it ahead of Steve. And we'll get it down to about the 37-yard line. Upsets all over the place. Let's find out a little more. Keo Sergey breaking Mike Goldberg. Go lead. Barry, it is final in Miami. The number three Miami Hurricanes have been defeated by Georgia Tech. Remember, this was a game that was to be played much earlier this season. So it's Virginia Tech and Florida State now in the ACC championship game. Wow. That interesting. That's one of those hurricane makeup games. I remember Miami had a makeup game against UCLA in 98. UCLA was undefeated. They were upset by Miami. Remember that? That's right. I do remember that. Pinnaker rolls out this time. Throws, but not really. Uh, that is Fairman makes the catch, and McDonald out the tight end on the catch. And that will be another Fresno State first down at the 21-yard line, a gain of 15. McDonald only nine catches coming into this game. He's had two straight, still can't hold on to the football. No, dropped the one by the end zone, almost dropped the last one. Coming around on the drive route, still getting positive yardage, being a very productive tight end for this offense. Look at those numbers. Fresno State, 10 first downs, only four for USC. We're tied at seven. Pinnaker out of the gun once again. And the Trojans cover the blitz off the edge. And Pinnaker throws over the middle. That one is caught again by McDonald. And another Fresno State first down. And what a job Fresno State is doing in picking up those blitzes. And I'm surprised that Pat Hill has left Devin McDonald in there. The guy keeps swumbling the ball, but he keeps getting positive yardage. He's doing it against the zone. He's finding spots that time. He's got Schweigert on him. Schweigert's a defensive end. He's not an agile guy for pass coverage. Pat Hill recognizing that. Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator for the Bulldogs, recognizing that. And they keep on using the tight end. Fresno State looking great on him. They really are. First down at the seven-yard line. This crowd absolutely alive. The pass is caught this time. And that is going to be no sign yet. Short of the goal line. Mathis made the catch, stopped at the one-yard line. He reached for the end zone, but his knee hit before the ball crossed the plane of the goal. Right now, the dogs have done nothing but be efficient offensively. That ball, not well thrown, a little bit behind Mathis, ends up making the catch. You see the effort trying to get into the goal line. Colin Ashton was out there in the flat to stop him. That's a play that could have been a touchdown. Still a positive play. Now the Bulldogs. Right on the goal line, knocking again. Inside the one yard line, they got about six inches. Now it's called a foot and a half. Pat Hill, I'll tell you, Pat Hill's on the sideline and he is working the officials. Oh, he really does. He works those officials hard. Works them all game. You can see him 
barking behind him. And, you know, he wants he wants his team to be respected. He wants his team to uh, come out here and, and play as hard as they possibly can. They got a lot to lose. USC got a lot to lose. So does Fresno State in this football game. Let's watch this again. And you see the knee is down right there. That's a good call by the officials. That's nice play, placement. The knee is down. The ball's uh, six inches, Barry. I'm not sure. Yeah, I would say. It wasn't in, I'll tell you that. That was the right call. And the officials, they'll look at it upstairs, but I, I would doubt that this is going to get overturned. Jack Wood, incidentally, is the referee in this game. Good-looking man. <laughs> I'm Greek! Here's another look at it. Ball, as you said, was not uh, not Finnegar's best pass by any stretch of the imagination. Now, I did get the ball across the plane of the goal, That's but... Tough. It's tough to tell from that angle because you can't see the leg on the ground. That's right. If the knee is down and the ball hasn't crossed the goal line, it is not a touchdown. I don't think this will get changed. You can see Pat Hill in the bottom left. He's, he's talking all the... He sat and talked with us for, what, two hours last night? Yeah, and I had him on the radio, you know, earlier in the week on my radio show. And we taped the interview. That was 20 minutes before the interview, 15-minute interview, and then 25 minutes after the interview. I mean, he's really excited this week. And I thought I was special. I heard him on every other radio show in the country. <laughs> he's really, really selling it this week, and it's his time to do it. This Why not? Fresno State team is trying to do what Virginia Tech did, what Florida State did uh, about a decade and a half ago, is really pull the program up and just fight your way into that club with the big guys like anybody's had to do you know if you want to hang out with a cool crowd in high school you got to buy the cool clothes you got to be the cool guy you got to act the right way and that's what fresno state's trying to do and they're getting those officials they're getting everybody they're trying to get everybody on their side the officials it's just looking at for, this for another look yeah so uh, maybe there is a question in their mind I thought it was a, a pretty good call, and there has to be uh, conclusive evidence, and I'm not sure that there is conclusive evidence to change this call. Now, I didn't get past physical science in high school, which is like the real idiot science, you know, for the kids. I was like a senior. Everybody was a freshman. You did class. better than I did. I'll well, you know that. what I'm trying to say. I mean, I'm not a physics guy, but it's very difficult to look at momentum on a play like that and see right where the knee touches and right when the ball goes over. And even if they are looking at it over and over again, you have to think that the play on the field is going to stand. It's going to be second down and goal for the Bulldogs. they got a great chance to score. I guarantee you they're going to try to run this ball in right behind Virtue. No question. And again, this uh, continues. The crowd's starting to get a little bit antsy here. I'm getting antsy. Well, this is taking a while. And here we'll get the decision. After review. The ruling on the field is confirmed. The ball will be placed at the one-foot line, second down. So much ado about nothing. Now we got to talk about high school. <laughs> That's true. You know, I had my 10-year reunion recently. Didn't go. Didn't go. Too cool. You were in a cool crowd. Right? No, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The foot to take it in here. Second down. Vircher. Touchdown. And the Bulldogs have gone in front. There's nothing fluke about it. No, they've done it playing Bulldog football, doing what they do. Now, they've thrown a couple wrinkles, and this fullback never carries the ball. Here comes Rashawn Vircher right at you, taking on Oscar Lua. That's a big hit by both guys. Vircher didn't have far to go, and he's able to ride his body and get in. Big play for the Bulldogs and a very authoritative drive. Zimmerman's drive for point is up and good, and Fresno State has taken the lead. It's the Bulldogs, 14, the Trojans, 7. 12.07 remaining second quarter. The Bulldog fans loving it. Casual dining meal at half the price. And the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O. We welcome you back. 25-yard field goal officially by Danello. And it's a 14-10 ball game. Fresno State will get it back. 
Troy Van Blarkham will kick it off for the USC Trojans. Jennings the deep man with Marshall. And this is going to be Jennings at about the two-yard line. To the 10, the 15, got a gap. To the 30, to the 40, to the 45-yard line. This guy is tough. Nice return, Darnell Bing, a starter on defense for USC, has to make the tackle. Look at this lane open up. Wow, look at that lane. And that's just a poor kicker. <laughs> True freshman Van Blarkham between Jennings and the end zone. Van Blarkham gets in his way enough for Darnell Bing to catch up. What a nice jump on offense for Fresno State. You can do that when you have a good return game. Fresno State's among the best in the country with returning ball. They really are. Their special teams are very, very good. First out at the 45-yard line. Penninger going to go up on first down. Throws. Ball's caught by Williams into USC territory at the 40-yard line. Josh Pinkert on the stop, but again, good throw and catch from Pinnaker to Paul Williams. Pinnaker hasn't missed. No, I'm telling you. He, and, you know, he's also shown a good touch. And when he has to gun the ball, he guns the ball. And the Bulldogs need to get Paul Williams going. We've seen him drop a couple balls. He's been hit on him, but those are catches he's got to make if they're going to win this game. Maybe gets himself going with that catch, but right now, Pinnaker playing like a star. I remember he threw for 413 yards against Oregon, so he seems to play up to the level of his competition. Pinnaker going to throw again, and this one's caught underneath by Fernandez. A pickup with body. So they are just moving the ball down the field, pitch and catch. First down line brought to you by theoverstock.com. Save up to 70% every day because, well, you know, we always talk about this, Pete. It's all about the O. So we were talking about that at breakfast. Can't stop talking about it. It's the O, it's the bacon. <laughs> Haunts me in my sleep. Well, this comes in motion this time, and it goes straight ahead of the fullback. Virtual. That's a Serena Rivera. Rivera will be close to the first down, but a little short. And we talked to Pat Hill last night for an extended period of time. And he was talking about the last time Fresno State played the number one team in the country. They went into Norman, Oklahoma, took on the Sooners in 2003 when everybody was talking about Oklahoma being the greatest team of all time. And he thought his team was a little big-eyed in that game, maybe a little bit tentative in that game. Not afraid, but just, you know, out there knowing who they were up against. He thinks this team is older, more mature, and they're handling it better, especially here in the first half. Third down and short, and this is two down territory. And again, they give it to the fullback, and this will be close. I don't know. This is going to be very close. I think it's going to be a little short. Brian Cushion making the tackle there. Nice play. Fresno State really wearing out those fullbacks. Though. It's going to be fourth down. I'm sure they'll go here. They're going to give it to the fullback? I think they will. Well, Vircher's coming in. He's the big back. Now, if it would really take some guts to go play fake and go for the whole ball here. Might as well. They already faked the punt. Fourth down. Inches. Fullback again, and he got it. Not by much. And they're going to take a long look at this. I might have been a little premature, but it's going to be extremely close. I thought he got a pretty good push, and I think he's going to get this, but not by much. I'm not going to say the play calling here is arrogant, but it is. Very gutsy, giving the ball to the fullback over and over again. Third and short, fourth and short, basically saying, this is us, try to stop it. Now this is gonna be really close. I'm just eyeballing it here, I think he got it, but it is really close. Well, it looks like he gets it on the push of the offensive line alone. He got nice turned play. around, though. Nice play by Colin Ashton who really had a hold of Vircher and would not let go. 
and a play like that, it's so close, it really comes down to the spot. And it's like what John Madden always talks about, left-footed spot or right-footed spot. You got it. By that much. Keep feeding the fullback, I guess. Bertrand removes the pile, though. Look at Pat Hill, he's looking at this measurement. Yeah, we got that one. You don't think he's feeling it right now on the sideline? He was feeling it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> he had me feeling it. <laughs> he did, that's right. We went out and did a few push-ups. Didn't need any coffee last night. Ball just inside the 30-yard line. Slot left. First down, Bulldogs. They bring Rivera in motion. And they throw that quick screen this time. And that's Jennings getting it ahead. He's about the 21-yard line. Brian Cushing on the stop. And a pickup of seven. And they continue to get positive first down yard. And that is how they're going to win this football game, if they're going to win it. That is just an old, call it the El Camino play from El Camino Junior College in Torrance, California. John Featherstone, a famous junior college coach who used to run that play. Throw it out there, get a couple blockers in front. It's like a run play, but it's out of the perimeter. Second down and three. Mathis comes in motion. Pittiger going to throw. Throws underneath for Mathis. First down to 15. Gets it to about the 14-yard line. Another Fresno State first down. Mathis, a guy who walked on this. This guy's not even in the press guide. Started his career at UCLA. Walked on at Fresno State. And he's the starting running back. Well, he was a scholarship player at UCLA and didn't like his situation there because he was behind Manuel White and Tyler E. Bell. Came up to, to Fresno State. Pat Hill said, well, you can walk on, earn a scholarship, and now he's gonna cross 1,000 yards probably in this game. Paul Pettiger, eight for his last eight with 84 yards. He's been money. First down, they mark it right at the 15-yard line. They go out of the eye formation once again. Pettiger gonna go up again. Throws over the middle, got a man, touchdown! Joe Fernandez! And the USC fans are sitting, I think, in stunned silence. Joe Fernandez, double move, but still takes the post. What a throw by Paul Pinnegar, threading the needle underneath Scott Ware, the safety. What can you say right now about this Bulldog offense? They're hitting the flats, they're hitting the running backs, they're hitting the middle, they're hitting the receivers, they're hitting everybody. And you gotta give it up for the offensive line too because Paul Pinnaker has not been touched. The extra point is good. Fresno State leads it by 11, Bulldogs 21, Trojans 10. Wow. We're going to the studio on the other side of this. Don't go away. I have to remember th for the Fresno State Bulldogs, they will try for a repeat in the final 30 minutes. And should they do that, I'll go back to the words that you said, Pete. Greatest upset in college football history. Well, what's at stake for USC is unbelievable. Here's how it started out. McIntyre, the tight end, fumbling into the arms of his teammate. Unbelievable play. And then, of course, Lindale White with the zone play. We've seen a lot of that. We have not seen a lot of this. Fresno State very physical against USC. Rashawn Bircher, the fullback, getting a lot of work. And then the pass to Fernandez by Pinnaker, maybe one of the great passes of Pinnaker's career, really thread the needle there. You can see the numbers here. 15 first downs for Fresno State, 14 for USC. Fresno State did not rush for a lot of yards, but did rush effectively. 203 passing yards for the Bulldogs. 104 for Matt Leinert in the first half. 65 of those 128 rushing yards, of course, coming on one play from Reggie Bush. Bush over 100 yards on just six carries. Fresno State looking to conquer a giant. 32 straight wins, 43 of 44. 15 and 0 is Pete Carroll in November. 25 straight home wins. 30th straight week ranked number one in the AP poll. If Fresno State can pull this off, Barry. I think turn the college football world upside down. Upside down. 
Not to mention a valley. <laughs> that won't exist anymore. That's just gonna, the party is going to blow that place out. You can see the comparison between the quarterbacks. These guys really are similar, similar in style, similar in, in how they're built, similar in how they throw the football, similar in how they manage a football game. They are. They're both very smart quarterbacks. They know how to check in and out of plays. They do that well, and they're both very precise with their passing. Jennings coming out from two yards deep. Tries to get to the outside, cuts it back, and is stopped short of the 20-yard line. And a flag comes in from about 20 yards away. Clay Matthews made the stop at the 15-yard line. Probably ill-advised to bring that one out, especially when the return was set up to the far side. And that's going to back the Bulldogs up all the way to about the seven yard line. And that's their third or fourth penalty in the kicking game during the return. Illegal block in the back above the waist, number 15 of the return team. Penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal line, first down. That'll take it all the way back to the six yard line. You can see how productive Fresno State was in the first half. And we even mentioned that punt. That still used up eight plays even though it only went 36 yards, and it kept the defense from being out on the field for a long period of time. Positive plays all night. The defensive line and linebackers have not gotten to Pinnegar. Fresno starts 94 yards away. I think a very important drive right here. Look how low Pinnegar is taking that snap like an option quarterback. Big guy, too, but a throw out of his own end zone. Does, caught by Williams. First down on the first play, out to the 20-yard line. Go to the sidelines, Jim Watson. Why do you talk with Pete Carroll? What do he say? Uh, he, he hates that short passing game that they're showing again. You know, I talked to him about the offense. I said, what's the problem? He said, long fields have led to breakdowns for us. Then we talked about Fresno State, and he talked about, and he had some admiration in his voice about the great job that Fresno State is doing with that short passing game. Pinnaker is unbelievable so far. I asked about adjustments. Will you bring the cornerbacks up? He said, we'll make some changes, but no. He said, the real key is first downs for Fresno State. We have to stop them on first down. Hey, guys, didn't Pat Hill say the same thing last night? I believe he did. Well, these coaches really part of a mutual admiration society. They both have great respect for one another. And I think they will have after this game, no matter what way it goes. Give this time to Mathis, not much. Got about two, maybe three. Three yards. They were telling us that's good enough. Well, we talked about it at halftime. If Fresno State can do what they've done, and especially what they did in the first half, and get a nice long drive here, even if they have to punt it or just get a field goal, they're really going to make a believer out of USC. Right now, a lot of people are saying, well, USC's been down before in the second half. They've come back. Not going to be a problem. They'll wear Fresno State down. They're bigger. But if Fresno State can score here, Look out. Well, I think the difference, too, is in those other games where they were behind in the first half, you can make a case for USC being flat. They weren't flat in the first half of this game. Can going to throw again. Now it comes back over the middle incomplete. Tenet for the tight end McDonald. And I thought Lua had a lot of jersey there. He did. That's what you get when a middle linebacker is back there playing the pass. No call on it. Oscar Lua doing a good job backing up and getting a hand up. And that was a big play for USC, forcing that incompletion. Fresno State with a third and long right now. If they force a three and out line and USC can come back and score, Fresno State might start to tighten up a little bit. I think that's absolutely right. Big play right here. Third down and seven. Fresno State has not had a lot of third and longs. They go out of the gun. Pinnaker straight back. Now he throws. Almost intercepted. There's a throw that I'm sure Paul Pinnaker would love to have back. Ryan Ting almost had the pick. If he got the pick, he was gone. Well, the thing that jumped out at me was the great protection. Pinnaker has had it all night. USC bringing four guys. They can't touch him. Not a great throw. And Ryan Ting getting in front, batting it down. Nice play. Great stand by the USC defense, forcing a three and out, coming right out of the tunnel. Now Fresno State's got to punt it. It's going to be on their defense to stop that USC offense. We might be looking at a wild second half here. Yeah. They go out of punt. And the onus now turns to the USC offense and the Fresno State defense. Didn't get this one as high as he'd like. Bush at the 41. Starts back, there's a block in the back. I don't know if it's going to get caught, but there was one. And Bush takes it down the sideline, and he may be going to say he stepped out of bounds. There was clearly a block in the back there, and that's not going to get caught. 
It's been a wild game in special teams. People flying all over the place and blocking all over the place. Reggie Bush looking good. Look at the Fresno State defense. They have been stellar in that first half. That snarly bulldog putting it on Matt Liner, stopping Lindale White, batting balls around, playing with excitement. Should have had the pick there, but defending well in the goal line. I mean, they've been great tonight, and they have played with a level of tempo and excitement and really brought the fight to USC's offense. Not to say SC's offense hasn't been good, but Fresno State's defense has played them every play and scratched and fought for every inch of turf. Trojans start with a short field, something that Pete Carroll talked about with Jim Watson. He said, we've had long fields all day long. They don't have one now. They're at the 43-yard line of the Bulldogs. A blitz on first down, and Leiter just gets it away for Hancock, and Hancock with a grab. Picks up about six yards, and Miner was under siege, but again, the mark of an experienced quarterback. Colbert coming hard and a hand on line. Here comes the blitz right there. That's Culver. Gets an arm on Liner, but a nice play by Brandon Hancock. Nice catch. He really has great hands. Picked up seven, second and three. Reggie Bush, Bush on a sweep, trying to get outside, what a cut, 25-20, he's to the 10, cuts inside, still on his feet, drives to the end zone, comes up about a half yard short, a thing of beauty. Reggie stretching that ball to score, almost made it in, the move he made on Richard Marshall, just like you said, Barry, textbook, a guy making a move like that, five, six yards ahead, watch this. He'll push it to the outside, right back up inside. Not everybody can do that. I mean, no. there's about two or three people in the history of football that can make that move. Reggie's got crazy legs, but precise legs. Look at that. And Marshall's a good tackler, but he didn't have a chance there. And another cut going inside. Reggie Bush on a great run. He left Shirley hanging, too. And Bush drives for the end zone. Going to be stopped short. Now, I don't agree with leaving him in the game at this point. You're down on the goal line. You want to give the guy the touchdown because he worked so hard to get down to the goal line. But Lindale White's got to be in on that play. Reggie Bush just not great on the goal line, not great between the tackles in that situation. And here you see Lindale White. Lindale White is in there, and Bush will leave. You know, the thing about Reggie Bush's cuts is he makes them at full speed. He doesn't miss a step. He makes them at full speed, and he sets people up two, three, four yards ahead, and then the guys behind them are also set up. It's an instinctual thing. Second out about a half yard. White the tailback, Curtin the fullback, two tight ends. This is White, short. Again, Fresno State digs in, stops Lendell White. Might have lost about a half a yard. Fresno State making the stand. Now, when USC's defense has made stands against Fresno in this football game, they have run the football and kept doing it. They've been very tough about it. Alan Goodwin on the stop there. USC's got to do the same thing. If they throw the ball here or fake it, they're showing Fresno State they don't want to be physical with them. They've got to give the ball to Lindale White and score, run a quarterback sneak. Lost about a half a yard. And now we're going to get a timeout called, I think, by Fresno State. They weren't quite sure where they needed to be, and I think this is a very good timeout call. Maybe one that could come back and haunt them, but I think you got to make that call right here. Do you feel what I'm saying here? This is a chest-puffing rooster show right now I'm between feeling, these teams. I'm feeling what you're saying. USC has got to run the ball in. They tried to give it to their big back. It was second down. He didn't get in. It's third down now. They got to do it again, and they got to do it again on fourth. You are so macho. Take a look at the <laughs> Pac-10 players of the week from last week. Drew Olson, UCLA quarterback, threw for over 500 yards. He's macho. He is. Macho. Macho. Kevin Benjamin. Who can forget him to know Mr. Love him? Washington Very macho as well. Ten tackles, one sack, despite my headdress. And one interception and a win against Arizona. Paul Martinez. Not macho. <laughs> the big game. Cal, 27 to 3 over Stanford. How about Lynch? 123 yards. Oh, there's some running backs in this league. Oregon, big over Oregon State in the fog. Dixon, 204 yards passing and three touches. Brink, a 39 yard touchdown pass in the minute, 20 seconds left. Got to feel good for Bill Dover and the Washington State. Well, the Cougars. Civil War and the Apple Cup, both on FSN. God bless those games. Pac-10 action popping off today. I would have been the construction village people. Just yeah, probably. Probably, because, you know, I'm a builder of things. Meantime, it's third down and a yard to
to go for a touchdown. Sneak. Second effort got it. They stopped him the first time, but Lyman, with a second effort, pushes forward for the score. And this is likely to be a one-point game. Now that's drawn a line in the sand. USC probably going to go for two here, but they're not. They're bringing in the kicker. They could have gone for two in the tie. It's a little early to do that. You see Matt Leiter getting a good push with his offensive line behind Deuce Latouille. Getting over McIntyre, the All-American preseason guy. Drawn a line in the sand. Very macho. Danella's drive for point is up and good, and the Fresno State lead is cut to one. It's Fresno State 21 and the USC Trojans 20. Got a football game here in the Coliseum. We're coming back. Official performance machines of the Pac-10. And the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. It's all about the O. Well, the Trojans behind the running of Reggie Bush take it in with the conversion of one-point ball game. Fresno State will get it back. Matt Larkham to kick it away. Drives this one. There'll be no return here. Or will it? <laughs> yeah, Jennings making a liar out of him. I was right. He shouldn't have done it. Oh, he shouldn't have done it. You should never do that if you get the ball that deep. Jennings making a bad decision. Now, they're a very good return team, but nobody's that good. He's six yard deep. What you need is Marshall to come over there and put his hands up and give the stop sign. He did not do that. You have to help out your teammate there and give the stop sign. There's a lot of times when you catch that ball, you don't know where you are. Jennings making a bad decision and paused before he made that bad decision. Yeah, he did. So now Fresno State with the long field. Bulldogs still lead it by, by one. Davis to Mathis, bounces it outside. Forget about it. Lost a couple of yards. We're going back to our studio. We're Keo Sarah Red with Mike Goldberg. Mike. College football's oldest rivalry. The 122nd meeting between Harvard and Yale, and for the first time ever, the game went in overtime. But not one overtime, not two, but three overtimes where the Crimson reign supreme again. They defeat Yale 30 to 24. Another great don't, rivalry. Don't. Great. Harvard, Yale, oh, right I now. It. I love it. Fresno State up on USC. Harvard, Yale. Those kids to go study. Got a football game going on here. Pitting her out of the gun. The crowd is absolutely alive. Screen flagged out. Rivera at the 25, and we're going to get a hold. It's going to come back. Well executed play, but for one small thing. That's going to back the Bulldogs up even more. Holding, offense number 50. Penalty will be enforced half the distance in the previous slot. Replay, second down. D'Artagnan Shaq on the hold. D'Artagnan Shaq, a great tackle of Shakespearean proportions. <laughs> That's not much of a hold, just a swing down. Nice screen run by the Bulldogs. Now second and long, going backwards now. Starting here in the second half. Bad field position off of both kicks. Put it around his own end zone. Batted right back in his face by Lua. Morales, I believe it was Ellis. Cedric Ellis, the three technique, just running over the right guard, Ryan Wendell, and batting that down. USC's defense and their offense has created momentum now. The crowd behind them, Fresno State scrambling. They're back into a corner, even though they're still up one. But I like Fresno fighting out of a corner. This is going to be a fight here in the third quarter. I think it is. They're third down and a whole bunch here. Third and 18. They 
they just need something positive to get a better punt off. Yeah, nothing has happened positive for them here in the second half. Long way to go. Pinnaker out of the end zone. Steps up, going deep for Williams. Overthrew him, and it might have been intercepted. I think it was. Picked off by Brandon Ting at the 46-yard line. Ting brothers out there doing their thing tonight. The Ting thing. Yeah. More chest bumping and finger taping than any twins in the history of football. Brandon Ting coming over, making the play. I think the Bulldogs got a little bit desperate there going deep. They needed to get 15, 10 yards, something like that, and punt the ball out of there. Instead, they go deep, they go for it all, try to get the ball to Williams. The fact is, they punted it last time to the 43-yard line. Here they are at the 45, so much difference but again great field position for USC it's about momentum the turnover you're right trying to take the lead here Reggie Bush left side look out 30 20 10 forget it Reggie Bush touchdown that's momentum for you Reggie Bush can create a lot of it we've seen his speed and his speed is at a pinnacle level tonight Reggie Bush tonight, 12 carries, 198 yards, and a touch. Left side gets a good block from his fullback, David Kirkman. Wide receiver Chris McFoy, the pride of Chino, California, also helping out. And Reggie Bush untouched. When you're that fast and nobody touches you, you're going to touch the zone, no question. Boy, he is special. I mean, I've thought that all along, but he's, he's really special. Nobody more explosive than college football. No. Nobody can affect the game on that college football. for point is up and good, and USC has taken a six-point lead on the shoulders of Reggie Bush. The late flag comes in. We'll check on that while we're away. Trojans lead 27-21. We're coming back. Start of the second half. Yeah, he looks beautiful right now, taking that ball up the sideline. What a game breaker he is, and he's having another one of those games that's going to look really good for his Heisman campaign. Just breaking runs all night. Fresno State adding problems to themselves for themselves. They had a personal foul penalty on that try for point, and so it's assessed on the kickoff. So USC will kick it off here from midfield. They have to take this USC punch. They can't get too upset. They can't get too frustrated. Personal foul penalties, indicative of frustration. They have to relax and still play here and try to stay within their offense. And Marcus drives this one way out of the end zone. Let's take another look at Reggie Bush. I mean, he got to the corner, and you knew the dance was over. He gets to the corner very fast, couple nice blocks, untouched. Nobody has a chance to get him. Just look at him leaving defenders in his wake. Wait, I'm not a big believer talking about the Heisman Trophy early, but at this point in the season, I think it's fair to talk about it. Reggie Bush, third in all-purpose yards, 298 tonight. He's still got a long way to go. 1,302 rushing yards. He was fifth in the Heisman Trophy uh, balloting last year, but of course, he was fifth to his teammate, Matt Leiner. And the one thing you have to wonder about is, will they split the Heisman votes? Well, they might on the West Coast. The thing about Reggie Bush, he has only one touchdown in the last few games. He's been good, but for Reggie Bush to get that Heisman, he's got to do something spectacular on every single play, you know? Pinnaker going up on first down, intercepted. Picked off by Big. Big still to speed at the 15. He's to the 10. He's going to wall in front of him. Touchdown, Trojan. And again, a late flag comes in, and I think it's going to be another frustration penalty. We'll see. First really poor pass that Pinnaker has thrown. This one might be coming back. The interception's going to stand, but I think it's going to be a play on a block by Lawrence Jackson. Pinnaker, he's been money all night, making a bad throw. Never saw Darnell Bing cutting right up underneath. Jermaine Jamison breaks a tackle and takes it into the end zone. Darnell Bing, a running back in high school, played a little tailback here at USC in back. practice. Illegal block below the waist, number 96 of the return team. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. 
nonetheless. It will give you a see the ball at the 32 yard line. They have owned the second half and a chance to really drive a dagger into the heart of Fresno State here. Well, we talked before the game about Fresno State setting their hair on fire and running down the tunnel, getting ready to play before the game started. They did he has done that in the second half. They've totally taken the momentum away now, and Fresno State really suffering the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Everything USC has, they're throwing it at them. The run game, Matt Liner, Reggie Bush, Darnell Bing, turnovers defensively. Fresno State now starting to get negative play. SC playing with a real purpose here. Liner's going to throw on first down. Comes back the other way. Smith can't hang on. I kind of like the way the USC receivers, though, come back to Matt Liner. They're all well coached. Here's the guy coaching him, Pete Carroll. Look at him. The excitement about an interception. That's a defensive coach getting geeked about a turnover, and now he sees the penalty. Look at him yelling at the official, Darnell Bing standing there. Excitement to anger. Football's a roller coaster. Yeah, it is. Week in, week out, minute in, minute out, play in and play out. Goes up and down. Second down and 10 at the 32-yard line. Reggie Bush, 30, 25, dragged down. But another pretty good chunk. We go back to the studio now for a Kiyosara game break with Mike Goldberg. Mike? Barry, the big upset of the day, number three Miami. They came in hoping they'd get a chance to play in a BCS Bowl, maybe even for a national championship, but they didn't get it done today at home against Georgia Tech, the rambling wreck upset the Hurricanes 14 to 10. Well, we have the makings of an upset here, and still at the moment, only a six-point game, but old Mo is clearly on the side of the home team right now. Who's Mo? Remember Mo? <laughs> that was a delicatessen on Fairfax Avenue. Guy from the Three Stooges. Blitz comes, it's picked up. Liner throws, and a great job to come back for the ball again by Jarrett. McCauley really never looked for the ball. Well, we've seen some really nice communication in the past between Leonard and Jared, and that's what this is. Leonard sees McCulley way in front of Jared with good coverage, throws it behind. Jared recognizes it, stops his feet. Tough play, play for McCulley to cover, but a very nice play, very nice understanding between a quarterback and his leading receiver. See those numbers, that's pretty startling, too. USC, of course, trying to be the first team to have a 3,000-yard passer, 1,000-yard, 2,000-yard rushers, 2,000-yard receivers. Got a few weapons. Liner rolls out this time. Looking for Jarrett. Now he throws underneath. And the ball is caught by Davis. And Davis gets more after the catch. A gain of about nine. We'll take it down about the six yard line. And right now, the Trojans have the Bulldogs back on their heels. That's just Matt Liner and his maturity. First off, USC wants to get the ball to see Smith here. He's covered. Then he wants to get it to Dwayne Jarrett there. He's covered, so he comes down, checks it off to Fred Davis, who's behind coming into the flat. Three options there. Matt Leinart exhaust one, exhaust two, gets it to the third, and almost gets a first down. That's a mature quarterback doing it all on the move. Short of the first down by about a half a yard, so kind of a free play here. Leinart looking to the end zone. He's got Smith, but he didn't see him quick enough. Now he throws, and he's got him again. Touchdown Trojan. Matt Smith open once. Smith turned, went the other way. Leinart found him again. And another six for the Trojans. You play football at USC. It's not easy to get the ball thrown your way with all these guys out there. Steve Smith, not far from 1,000 yards himself, calling for the ball the whole time. Watson wants it. Finally, it comes. He's got to get up. Makes the catch. USC now going on all cylinders offensively and defensively. And Fresno right now in the second half didn't run out of the building by the Bulldogs. No question about it. Third touchdown in the second half by the Trojans. Try for point to make this a 13-point ball game. It is up. It is good. And it has happened very quickly. And that's what USC has done. It's what they did in Oregon. It's what they did in Arizona State. And right now it's what they're doing at home with Fresno State. Bing with the interception to start things, came back for a penalty, and then the pass to Smith for the score, and the Trojans lead it by 13.
first half of second half, Fresno State will have decent field position. That's a break for the Bulldogs. They're going to get it at the 35. That's a mistake by USC, and I guarantee you, Pete Carroll's swearing up a storm right now on the sideline. Well, our aerial coverage, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new assurance tires. There's the Goodyear blimp. Been around a long time. You know, blimp got its name. This is for real. Tell me. I'll tell you. It was from somebody flicking their finger against it to see if it was properly inflated. And that was the that sound? That was the sound that it made. <laughs> I thought it was a Zeppelin. I thought it was a Zeppelin. I think a Zeppelin is different than a blimp. I think a blimp has soft sides and a Zeppelin has infrastructure of some kind. Well, thanks a lot, Oracle Wright. I like that, huh? Mr. Aviation. Tell me about the Spruce Goose. Big old plane. <laughs> Wooden. Termites. <laughs> Here's a give this time to Mathis, and Mathis with positive yards. And I think your point is well taken. Fresno State, by no means out of this football game, but they have to do some business here just to get a little bit of the momentum. Well, you saw what USC has done since the second half started. They've really gotten on a roll. But Fresno State, they had the momentum going into the second half. Now they're in trouble. They can't let up. They've got to keep playing their game. And Pat Hill's not going to do anything different than he's been doing. They just got to keep doing it. Vinegar, a couple of picks here in the third quarter. Give it to Mathis again. First down and more. Mathis into USC territory. Taking people with him all the way down to the 43-yard line. Longest run of the game for the Fresno State Bulldogs. Nice, aggressive run by Wendell Mathis. Only 215 pounds, but look at him breaking tackles. Oscar Lua being handled, driven down the field. That's Kyle Young, the center, doing that, an all-whack player. They say he's the best old lineman in Fresno State history, driving back the USC middle linebacker. That's a physical play and a nice play and a positive play right now for Fresno State. First out at the 43-yard line of USC. Pinnaker this time, give again to Mathis, cut back. Got a little room, ran into the umpire. <laughs> And picked up 11 more and another first down. Would have had 15 if it wasn't for that pesky umpire. <laughs> like the kids at Scooby-Doo. And it would have been more yardage if it wasn't for that meddling umpire. Wendell Mathis doing a good job. Look at that. So you don't expect that hit. You know, you brace yourself for the other hit, but when the umpire throws you a forearm, you don't expect that coming. And I'm sure his bicep is stinging right now. Nothing's going right for Fresno State in the second half. They get into the open and they get stuck. First out at the 32-yard line. Go to Mathis again. And this time, USC has it defensed. Get him about a yard, maybe two. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day because it's all about the Times have we said that. Great thing about the O is when you say O, your mouth makes the shape of an O. So it's like, it's very special in that way. Probably the only letter that that's true of. Right? I believe it is. I'm trying to think too. I know. <laughs> Second down and eight. Rivera goes in motion. Empty backfield. Pinnaker rolls out. Now he throws too tall and it's caught by Rivera. That was not intended for Rivera. He badly overthrew him, and Rivera just happened to be standing in the right place. Fresno State sending the tailback and the fullback out of the flat. Fullback Rivera behind Wendell Mathis. The ball goes over Mathis' head and drops right in the arms of Rivera. Look at him out there. <laughs> right behind Justin Wyatt, the corner. That's a lucky play for the Bulldogs, but they have made a statement on this drive, coming out, running the football, playing hard, playing fizzle, a little luck there, and now they got another first down. Rivera stays in the game. And Pinnaker throw it for the end zone for Williams, touchdown! And there's a statement. The Bulldogs are not going away. This is not gonna be another runaway victory in the second half for the USC Trojans when it looked like they was in trouble. Paul Williams running down the field, way too open, 
Somebody makes a mistake in that zone. Both safeties looking at each other. Scott Ware and Darnell Bing nowhere to be found. Too easy. The USC defense gives up a touchdown at Fresno State with a very impressive drive answering USC. Drive for point is up and it is good. And just like that, it's back to a six point ball game. Don't go anywhere. Number one team in the country, and you're on the road. That's impressive. Fresno State to do. Now they got to keep it going because USC is not going to stop. This one's going to be a sprint to the finish and expect some defense too. Bush and Bing, the deep man. And again, they'll kick it to the right hash, I'm pretty sure. They come forward and this one is driven. About two yards deep, Bush going to come out to the 10, to the 15. Good block. 20-yard line, got to 25 before he's knocked out of bounds. Reggie Bush on the night. He's been the difference maker, of course, for the USC Trojans. 205 rushing yards, that's a career high. And he is a guy, I mean, it's almost a cliche to say that every time he touches the ball, he looks like he can go all the way. But that's an absolute fact. Well, he's gone over 300 in the all-purpose area tonight. And anybody who plays him, I mean, they haven't seen anybody like him. You haven't seen anybody like him on the field. You haven't been up against anybody like him. He reminds me of a Desmond Howard or Rocket Ishmael, the way they ran down the field and the way they attacked people with their cuts. But he's different than that because he's a tailback. He's more physical than those guys. That's absolutely right. Well, here he is again. Right up the middle. And this time he's gang tackled. Still picked up about three. Going back to the studio for Keo Sarah game break with Mike Goldberg. Mike. Barry, win number 353 for Joe Paterno, one of the biggest of his coaching career, because with Penn State's victory over Michigan State earlier today, they earned their first Big Ten title in 11 years and their first BCS first ever. 31-22 final, 78-year-old Joe Pa headed to a BCS Bowl game. Joe Pa didn't turn around with a lot of young players. What a champ. Second down and seven. Pretty old here. Here's that quick screen, and this is Jarrett shaking tacklers, and I think he got enough for the first down. Nope, I'm going to say he stepped out at about the 34-yard line. Trojans in the second half, uh, yeah, they've made a couple of adjustments. Three possessions, three touchdowns, 11 plays, and Reggie Bush accounting for much of that yardage. And every time dealing with a short field, the defense is helping out the offense, one hand washing the other, and they've used a lot of different guys doing it. Third down and short now. Good play right here for the Bulldogs. They have not been able to get a stop at all in the second half. And they are wide in the backfield. Miner's going to throw. Hit as he throws. It's incomplete. Very good push that time up front by Tyler Klutz. Tyler Klutz taking on Lindale White who tried to cut him keeping his feet and making the hit on Matt Leinart, affecting the throw. And here's USC with a three and out. Now Jennings, not only a great kick returner, but an excellent punt returner as well. Standing back at his own 20-yard line. Good kick by Malone. Really turned this over. Drives Jennings all the way back to 12-yard line. Jennings starts back, gets the 20, cuts, look out! He's the 30, only the kicker to beat! Midfield to the 45, the 40, the 35 had run down from behind that time on a saving tackle by Mayo Mayava. We said that the Bulldogs may have an advantage in the kicking game. They can score a touchdown here. They retake the lead. Jennings running the ball very well. Tom Malone. Slows him down just enough. And Mayava makes the play. And it's not just Jennings with the speed. It's the blocking. It's the setup. It's the whole special teams mentality, the hardworking blue-collar mentality of the Fresno team. 57-yard return off a long 54-yard punt. And the Bulldogs back in business at the 30-yard line of USC. Give is to Mathis, gets into the secondary, takes it all the way down to the 20-yard line, close to a first down. 
They found a little something up the gut here. Their offensive line, very good. Getting a nice push. See him washing people down. Nice block on Colin Ashton getting stopped. You see the USC linebackers, Oscar Lua, Brian Cushing. All of them about 10 yards down the field making the play. Fresno State getting a good push. Second down, a little more to yard. Ball short of the 20 yard line. Pinninger giving it to Mathis again. First down and more. Spins into the secondary, gets it inside the 10 yard line to the nine. Picking up in chunks now and all right up the middle. Colin Ashton makes the stop, but a gain of 11. Watch Frosty Rucker getting washed down the line of scrimmage. Very physical. Chris Denman moving him down the line of scrimmage, unable to make the play. Fresno State's offensive line taking over on this drive. If you can run the ball against USC in the second half, you have a chance to win the game. Mathis now 16 carries, 78 yards. A lot of it here in the second half. First down and goal just inside the 10-yard line. Give it to Mathis again, and Mathis this time stacked up after a game of about two. Stop short of the 7-yard line. I know we've talked a lot about it, but you got to respect the Bulldogs, what they're doing right now. Going punch for punch with the heavyweight champion, running the ball over and over again, not backing down, taking USC's overhand rights and coming right back and counter-punching. This is a great game against two great teams. Absolutely. No question about it. Really shows a lot of character on this Fresno State team. Likewise, on USC's team to come back from the first half. Second down and goal. Pinnaker short drop, looks end zone. It's batted in the air, and we're going to get a flag for interference. They may pick that up because of the ball being batted. Once that ball goes up in the air, it's okay to hit the receiver. Darnell Bing, I believe, hit the ball up in the air. There is no foul for pass interference. The ball was tipped. Good call, partner. It's the right call. It is now third down and goal. Ball at the nine yard line. Darnell Bing getting a hand up, and once that ball goes up in the air, all bets are off. It's like those receivers have camouflage on, and the second that ball gets hit, they're stripped naked, they're out there exposed. Very pivotal play in this football game right here. Third down, goal to go. The ball just inside the nine yard line of the Trojans. Tough spot to have third goal. Fresno State's going to have to burn its second time out. That will leave the Bulldogs with only one remaining. But again, you can't really question this decision. Got to get things right in this situation. It's an important play. Well, tomorrow on Fox NFL Sunday, the Eagles and the Giants will look to bounce back from tough losses last week. Or you'll see Sean Alexander lead the Seahawks into San Francisco. 49ers just trying anything they can to get a touchdown, let alone a win. Or other regional action all begins with America's number one pregame show tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on Fox. You watch that NFL? I do. Really? I watch the games. So college footballed out, you know? So immersed in the college game. I actually prefer college sports to pro sports. The pageantry. It must be told. The pageantry. I like talking to the coaches. I like being around the kids. Let's go down to Jim Watson right now. Jimmy, what's up? Well, you know the mantra. It's, it's anyone, anytime, anywhere, and we're watching it play out. Under Pat Hill, FSU has scheduled aggressively when they go out of conference. They'll go anywhere, play anybody. Remember, they played Oklahoma a couple years ago in Norman when they were number one. And actually, they have a lot of success. Over their last nine such games against BCS schools, the Bulldogs are 6-3 and three against the Big Dogs. They actually had a five-game winning streak against BCS teams before they lost to Oregon earlier this year. And you guys remember, they actually she led that game 17 to nothing in a sign of respect Oregon is actually going to open at Fresno next year games like this for them are an opportunity not an obligation and we're watching it play out right here and they're fighting they wanted to play at LSU this year I really love Pat Hill talking to us about that he said we wanted to play there we would have gone down played in Death Valley at LSU he said you know they picked Appalachia State the Appy State Appy State Third down and goal. 
Huge play here. Pittinger, short drop, throw, slant, intercepted. Look out. Where on the interception gets it all the way back to the 30-yard line. Huge play for the USC Trojans. And the third interception of the second half thrown by Paul Pittinger. That's the first interception this year for Scott Ware, the big senior safety out of Santa Rosa, California. Getting a lot of guys on a lot of kill shots, but he hasn't picked one off. Jumping the slant route right in front of it. Bad throw by Pittinger. Scott Ware takes off down the sideline. USC defense stepping up and getting a huge turnover thanks to Scott Ware anticipating that throw. All right, the sidelines once more. Jim Watson with more on Scott Ware. Why don't you... Scotty Ware has got to be one of Petro's favorite players. The guy is just a madman. We watched him beat up a gate the other day at Cal. He was banging things against the wall. But he's also got a great sense of humor. I'm going to tell you about a Halloween trick he played on his teammates after this snap. We're coming right back to you. First down at the 30-yard line. Liner will go up. In trouble. Now he throws underneath. Bush on the reception. Trying to get to the outside. Does to the 40, to the 43. Making something out of nothing again. Let's go back to Jim Watson, buddy. All right, Halloween night after practice. And remember, that was the night that Lendell White pretended to yell at Pete Carroll and quit the team and walk off. It was all a ruse. Then later in the locker room, Scott Ware smuggles his pet crocodile into the Trojans' locker room. And while all the big linemen are in the shower, he turns off the lights and releases the reptile into the water with those glowing red eyes. Now, USC is not afraid of Bruins or Bears or Tigers, but I'll tell you what, it's pretty funny to watch a couple of 300-pound linemen running naked across campus. Funny? <laughs> trick? Pet crocodile. That, that doesn't seem like a trick to me. That seems more like a... Cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah, kind of a dangerous endeavor. Good Lord. Liner airs it out, and Jared can't make the catch. And a leg flag, and that's interference. And it's a good call also against Raymond Washington. Very physical collision down there on the sideline. Raymond Washington coming over the top. Well, Raymond's got the coverage coming over the top as Culver making the hit on Clay Jarrett. Just a little early. Now look to helmet contact, and that deserves the, the flag. It does most definitely deserve the flag. Very physical play down there. We call it personal foul. That's going to give the Trojans the ball in pretty good field position. And I think Fresno State's going to have to gather itself emotionally. They've made a couple of uh, not smart penalties here in the second half. They have, and a lot of it is frustration. A lot of it is aggression. They're out here trying to prove something. And a lot of the time, that kind of seeps into some things that are illegal in a football game. But that doesn't mean you can back off. You got to stay aggressive. You just have to try and play within the rules. Very emotional game, especially for Fresno State right now. And just fighting, 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 getting the ball all the way down the field, only to turn it over. And now you got the best offense maybe in the history of football knocking again at you. On the 43 yard line with the first down. Liner can go up in trouble. And this time McIntyre's got him way back at the 48 yard line. McIntyre's starting to get some penetration now. They put a couple of hits on that liner. McIntyre coming in, liner can't see him, turns right into him, <laughs> tries to turn away and run. Garrett McIntyre, his seventh sack of the year. This guy's a good player. Former walk-on, dominant player. Though. That's right, he's got Especially a brother a who's, a, who's a walk-on. Came out of South Lake Tahoe. Not exactly a football factory. It's a skiing factory. Never seen snow. That's right. Reggie Bush right up the middle, hits the outside. He's at the 30, it's another foot race. Cuts it back to the 20, comes back to the near side of the field. He is going to go. It's going to be another USC touchdown and another thing of beauty from one of the best running backs you have ever seen. Start talking about the highs when you see runs like that. That'll be on every highlight reel you can see tonight. Up the sideline, stopping on a dime, reversing its field, taking it back all the way across. That's a guy running the 100 and not slowing down until he gets to the end zone. What a play by Reggie Bush. And what can you say? Electricity, explosive, fun to watch. How many words are there to describe this run? Look at this. Just a zone play. He gets up, 
coming up the sideline untouched. I don't think he was ever touched. Then he stops, puts his chest out, comes back around the field. That's a guy not only with great ability, but supreme confidence with the football out there. That is a remarkable run, and one of many in this football game. Reggie Bush is absolutely putting on a show. Trojans by 13. Going off like this, there's nothing you can do but watch and maybe enjoy it. We kick this one out of bounds. So again, Fresno State will start at the 35, and I mean this has been a, an absolute showcase for Reggie Bush. I'm going to be quiet here. Watch the body control. That's a, you can't coach that. I mean, it just that's a gift. His numbers are, are absolutely startling. All-purpose yards tonight 396 we're still in the third quarter 396 all-purpose yards already broken the record carried the ball 15 times for 258 yards caught a couple of balls <laughs> you know you're gonna be here and you're gonna say someday I was there the night Reggie Bush had the night of his career oh no, that's Fresno right State. that's right I mean it's he's, he's really a joy to watch I don't care what side of the stadium you sit on. I'm sure the guys in the studio will appreciate this too. Let's see what they have to say, Mike. Barry, speaking of appreciation, you have to appreciate everything Bill Snyder did at Kansas State. In 1989, he took over the nation's only 500 loss team, and after 17 seasons, the man retires in fashion as Kansas State wins Bill Snyder's final game as head coach, 36 to 28. Well, Bill Snyder will uh, go off on a victory, and USC uh, do a little woofing here. That's uh, going to cost him 15. Yeah, the personal foul. Scott Ware, I think, was called for it. Getting an earful from Pete Carroll. You know, Bill Snyder, incidentally, coached at USC for a very short time. Did he? I did not know. That. Also coached in Orange County, I believe, Jim Watson, roaming the sideline, was his ball boy in Orange County back in the day in a high school situation. Now that's bringing it back, there see? You, you learn things. Everybody's connected. This is Mathis unable to get started. Might have been mm -hmm. Scott Ware right there on the tackle. And you got to wonder how the third quarter went for Fresno State, the way they fought. You see Marcus Allen posted out down there on the sideline, always dressed well. Heisman winner. That, that third quarter is pretty tough for Fresno State. Good for USC and Fresno State. They had a lot of fight in them, drove it all the way down. But that turnover, we'll see if it took all the air out. That was a big one. Again, uh, they're in good field position here. This game is by no means lost, although they're going to have to find some answer for Reggie Bush. Nobody's been able to do it yet. Pinnaker airs it out. Williams came off. Good play defensively that time by Josh Pinker. Two Trojans had a chance at that one. It was a nice throw. Colin Ashton first with the arm up, and then Pinker just batting it away at the last second. If Pinker doesn't get a finger on that ball, Williams is to the house. Nice throw by Pinker, even though it didn't work out. Now it's third down and long. They got the crowd involved now. 90,000 on hand. Third down and nine. Pinnaker has to throw underneath to Mathis. He's not going to get the nine. Only got about five. So now it's kind of decision time here for Pat Hill. They're about four yards short. He'll have a break to think about it because we have reached the end of the third quarter. And a look at the scoreboard shows the USC Trojans 41. The Fresno State Bulldogs, 28, a huge third quarter for Reggie Bush and the Trojans. They put 28 on the board after being behind at halftime by eight. It's a 13-point ball game. Trojans over the Bulldogs.
needing a yard. It's an interesting choice here by Pat Hill. This is a wobbly off the side of the foot kick that will take a very good bounce from Fresno State. And inside the 10 at about the 8-yard line. That's the easy part. Now the tough part is to stop USC, which they haven't been able to do. Our aerial coverage, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships, might be to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance Tire. Goodyear blimp been around a long time. You know what that little foot with the wing on it is, don't you? For the kids? No, I don't. To know their Greek mythology? That is the foot of the Greek god Hermes. The messenger gun. That's good knowledge. Thank you. See, you really you learn something. We try to, you know, add a little something to this right. game. Hermes also a ladies' man. And he makes great ties. <laughs> you wear those ties. I can't just take my dad. I can't afford those ties. <laughs> this is Reggie Bush. <laughs> Look at this. That's only five yards, but again. It's five yards, and I'm not sure how many backs could get. Well, each run for Reggie Bush tonight, more spectacular than the next. Watch his feet stop when he gets to the line of scrimmage. Boom! And then he just makes that little cut, jumps over, but that quick stoppage of the feet right at the point of attack, jumps over like he's jumping past like a trash can coming at him and getting right back up field. And that's the thing, he gets right back up field at top speed with a step. Picked up about six, second down. A draw play for Bush. And this time they got it. Knock him back down all the way to the eight yard line. Lewis Leonard leads the parade for Fresno State. Garrett McIntyre, superstar defensive end for the Bulldogs, coming up a little gimpy. But he's a tough guy. Looks like he's going to stay in, but you can see the grimace on his face. You know, the other thing to point out is that both these teams are young teams. I mean, these are bo both going to be outstanding teams next year. And if you've been watching USC over the years, you have faith in their ability to reload, and that's the same with Fresno. Liner rolling. Steps up, throws incomplete. Good job that time. By Vincent Mays coming up and putting a hit on the intended receiver. The Bulldogs not going away in this game. And like we were saying, USC reloads, they're a young team. Fresno State reloads, they're a young team. They've had nine wins a year since 1999. That's right. And I don't care what conference you're in. That's a great, great achievement. And well, and they have gone and played some tough teams. A ball out of his end zone. Jennings runs up, takes it to the 45 yard line, starts right back up the gut. It's by the first wave, and then it's grabbed from behind at the 30. And a flag is down back at the 20 yard line. Kerry Harris makes the tackle. Penalty flag down at the 20. A lot of flags in the special teams part of this game. That one's in an unusual place. No man's land. Yeah. Personal foul against the Trojans. And that's going to give Fresno State a very short field. And that will draw the wrath, I'm sure, of that man right there. Well, you saw that bewildered look on the During face the of Pete Carroll. During the run down, personal foul, defense number 40, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. You know, now you got to think back on that interception on the goal line. Had they been able to take that in, this game would be a lot closer, and they would be at the 15-yard line. We're coming back. Got to step up. Well, in the first half, he was 17 of 22, 203 yards, two touchdowns. Third quarter, four of 12, one touchdown. Three interceptions, only 49 yards. I mean, he really has taken a step backward in this football game. Now, is that him getting a little nervous, realizing what he was doing against USC? Is that USC stepping up, playing better defense in the second half? I don't know. Maybe a little of both. Well, he's 13 yards away from the end zone again, and they cannot afford to come up empty here. Going to throw, going to run. Now he's going to run. And the ball 
ball's loose, but they got it back, I think. Ball was just slapped out of Pinnaker's hand that time. And fallen on by one of the interior linemen. I think it was Oscar Lua getting a hand on that ball. Cedric Ellis getting an arm out. It was Oscar Lua spinning around. Fresno State dodging a bullet there. That might have been it. A lot of confusion, actually, on that last play. I don't know if that was going to be a quarterback draw. If it was, Pinnaker was very hesitant. But Donald recovered the ball. So a huge play here, third and ten. Ball back at the 16-yard line. Out of the gun. Pinnaker throws, catches made for a first down inside the five-yard line. And it was Devin McDonald on the catch. Devin McDonald, part of the first touchdown for the Bulldogs, that wacky play where the ball popped up. Jamison ending up with it. Been very involved catching the ball in this football game. Came into the game only nine receptions. He's had way more than half that tonight. So now first and goal, knows the football just across the four-yard line. Penninger under center. Williams in motion. They give it to Mathis. Straight ahead. Touchdown flag down. And there was more confusion out there with the Bulldogs lining up. Not sure this is not going to be some kind of procedure penalty. Prior to the snap, delay of game. Offense. Yeah. There is no foul for the illegal shift. The delay of game came before the ball was put in play. So two administrative penalties on that one for Pat Hill's team, and he's not going to like that. Not going to like it at all. That's just game management. Illegal shift, illegal procedure, a shift there, and then a delay of game. Paul Pinniger not managing the game well right now, quarterback. So it remains first down and goal, but now the ball back to the nine-yard line. Pitch this time to Mathis going outside, cuts it back, and gets close to the five. Picked up about three yards, maybe four yards on the play. Didn't have to cut that one back so early. Could have taken it a little higher to the next shelf of that defense. Colin Ashton, Jeff Schweiger making the play. Just a little antsy. Wendell Mathis putting his foot in the ground a little early and taking it upfield. I like the physical nature of the run. One of the few times tonight that they've run outside the tackles. Now it's second down. Goal to go from the six. They go out of the gun. Pinnaker straight back. Guns it. Incomplete. The attempt receiver fell down. It was Joe Fernandez in the end zone. Now it's third down. Probably for the best. Joe Fernandez covered by about three Trojans. Linebackers and safeties all clustered in the middle of the end zone. This is a huge play for Fresno State because they need a touchdown here to stay in this. USC's offense with the way Reggie Bush is going, he's not slowing down. This guy's having a career night. He's breaking records tonight for the Trojans. So a huge play right here. Out of the gun, third and goal. The ball at the six-yard line. Pinnaker rolling to his right, looking to the end zone, throws. Caught by Fernandez. A great catch by Joe Fernandez for the score with Justin Wyatt all over it. Justin Wyatt, a great cover corner. Joe Fernandez making a wonderful catch and a nice throw by Pinnaker on the move, rolling out. Wyatt with a hand in the back of Fernandez. Not sure if the other arm, the left arm, wasn't there early as well. And Fernandez still coming up with the football, showing the ref. Big play for the Bulldogs, getting back in this game, still fighting for every inch in the fourth quarter. Gotta love the character of this game. Absolutely. And try for point now, try to make this a six point game again. Well, there's no dog in the dogs. No question. I'm gonna start barking here. 
I got a good bark noise, too. I got a good one, too. Yeah, but yours is more Mine's Pomeranian. Older, more Pomeranian. They are looking at this right now. But I don't think there was any question that he caught the football. I don't think there's any question there was interference either. Nice extension, and the ball does hit the ground, but you have to think Fernandez's arm is under that ball when it does hit the ground. Yeah, I think so too. I can't imagine they would change this. Hard to tell from there because Wyatt's body gets over the football. That's a heck of a catch. I caught it. <laughs> yeah, he's not worried. He's got five catches, 66 yards, and a couple of scores tonight. I mean, he was just like this yesterday, wasn't he? Yelling at the refs while they're looking at the play. Poor refs is sitting duck there on the sideline. He walked up to the judge with me and kicked him. Hey, how was that looking for me? Conversation continues on the bench. There's, there's no worry in, in the mind of Joe Fernandez. Well, he's starting to get up now and pace. You know, you start to pace the sideline, you worry a little bit. Replay's new for everybody, you know, yeah, especially right. out here on the West Coast. They tried it last year in the Big Ten. Now everybody has drank the Kool-Aid. Look at the red on my gloves. That was a catch. <laughs> that was a catch. Yeah, we heard you the first time. <laughs> That's right. I think it was a catch, too. I do, too. But there is that shot of the ball hitting the ground. You just have to wonder, was the arm underneath the ball? It's tough to see because of Wyatt's body coming over. Not conclusive. Man. No, I don't believe so either. Here's another look at it. And that is P.I., no question about that. Wyatt, really good corner. It was this arm, was his forearm underneath the ball enough for that to be called a catch. Again, maybe not, but it's not conclusive. Now, we've seen thing things overturned that should not be overturned, and we've seen things stand that should not have stood. Instant replay still new in the Pac-10. So this is going to be interesting. I don't know which way they're going to go. I don't know which way Pat Hill will go if it gets it first. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that look of disdain. That was not a let's go have a beer after the game. <laughs> All right, here we go. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. So Pat Hill gets one. And the Bulldogs, they're just staying in this. And Hill told us last night, I don't mind the instant replay as long as they get it right. And it looks like they got it right on that one. Joe Fernandez on the sideline. Told you so. Try for point now to make it a six-point game. High snap, but pulled down. And the try for point is up and good. And these Bulldogs still right there. They trail by six. Now they're looking to get a stop on the mighty USC offense. Pioneer, purevision.com. And by Aflac. Ask about it at work. Well, what do you think, P? Heck of a football game, isn't it? Great football game because Fresno State will not give up. A lot of teams with that surge USC made in the third quarter would have given up, and USC would have the reserves in right now. John David Moody would be playing quarterback. But Fresno State has not given up. They've kept fighting. They've kept bringing the ball down the field, kept bringing the fight to USC. And it's going to be interesting to see what USC does on offense right now. Fresno State really showing the Trojans a game. Bulldogs have already scored more points than anybody else during this winning streak. Drive this kick. Bush about three yards deep coming out. Why not the way he's been going? The 15 to 20. Try to get to the outside. Still at his feet. And now the football is fumbled, and I think Fresno State may have this. They do. 
Huge play. Big Jason mistake. Huss with the recovery. Big mistake for Reggie Bush. Running away from his coverage. You see the return is supposed to go left. Reggie takes it right. There's nobody out there to help him. Nice play by McCulley. Batting that ball loose. Reggie Bush not taking care of the football. A little too loose with the football. Guy's got 300 plus all purpose yards on the night. It starts to feel like Superman and something like that happens. And now the Bulldogs can take the lead. Isn't it interesting that that's the Pat Hill said every now and then SC will not exactly clutch the football over their bosom. Right up the gut, Mathis, touchdown! Mm -hmm. oh, 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 how do you like this one? What a turn of events, the mistake by Reggie Bush, the fumble. We have seen the game turn in special teams. Look at the disappointment on Reggie's face, and then Wendell Mathis straight up the field to the goal line, untouched. Fresno State with momentum. You gotta love this. Nine minutes left, 47 seconds. It's gonna be a fight to the finish. It's been a battle the whole game. This to take the lead again. It's good, and Fresno State leads it. Nothing fancy on that last play. A lot of teams would have taken a shot at the end zone with the pass, not the Bulldogs. Mathis on the zone, taking it straight up the field. D'Artagnan Shaq with a wonderful block. Look at this. They lead the fullback through. Vercher with a nice block. And Mathis, no need to cut back. No need to drift on the front side. Just takes it right into that A gap. Straight up the gut and straight into the heart of USC's defense. A lot of Fresno State fans here. Look at them. <laughs> they got to be. Love it. You see that look of surprise on that guy? <laughs> that, that was probably the same look that Pete Carroll had. Well, they got to be clinging to the beers and the bars in Fresno. Something's happening up there. I'm not sure what, but I don't think you could get gas anywhere in the San Joaquin Valley right now. Everybody glued to their television. The Bulldogs with a one-point lead in the fourth quarter on the number one team in the country. Again, the things that are on the line here. USC, 32 straight wins. Records that you wouldn't believe. And there you see Reggie Bush, the man that made the mistake that let that lead change take place back there to receive this kickoff. Difference maker in the game on both sides now, Reggie Bush. Difference maker for USC's offense and USC's comeback from a 13-point deficit. Now the difference maker in giving the ball back to Fresno State to allow this lead touchdown. This kick will be at about the goal line. Bush again. And Bush caught by his own man. And will go out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. Let's take a look at, and now we're going to get another personal I'm foul. Fly. I don't know which way it's going to go. Here's our Aflac trivia question. USC, 32 straight wins. Which four Division I-A teams have had longer streaks since 1900? I know one. I do too. Maybe another Harvard mention. <laughs> it could be. I don't know. I do know the one. And this is going to be against USC. Isn't that interesting? I believe it's going to be more frustration from Reggie Bush. Pete Carroll telling everybody, settle down. Dead ball, personal foul. Number five of the return team. Right. Penalty will be enforced half the distance from the end of the run. First down. Reggie Bush very frustrated. Slaps a Fresno State player on the helmet, headed off the field. And then he popped the field judge. That was an accident. That was Haji Lane. So the Trojans start at the 10-yard line. Give it to Reggie Bush. Bush 
Cuts it inside. Gets across the 15 to the 16. Pick up a five. Reggie Bush is a man possessed right now, Barry. A couple mistakes in a row, and they keep feeding him the ball. USC's going to try to run here, run out the clock, and get the lead back. Got to stay under control. Tough. I mean, you're losing to Fresno State. Place is packed. A lot of Fresno fans here. They've been taking the fight to you all night. You're a fat cat. You're number one. You're a great football team. You guys are frustrated. Bush again. Bush this time has room. 20, 25 to the outside. 30, 35 and out of bounds. Well, he made a mistake, but he's trying to bring his team back. Watch Steve Smith coming around here, trying to figure out where Reggie Bush is going to run the football. See, Reggie can outrun him. Finally, Reggie sets him up, and Steve gets in the way of Lane, the linebacker. Reggie takes it out of bounds. Not an easy guy to block for. You don't know where he's going to go. But you're right. He sets his blocks really well. He does that. You know, Jerome Harrison of Washington State does that very well as well. In fact. First down across the 35-yard line. Right, the Trojans keeping it on the ground. Split backs now. Liner going to throw. Throws for Bush. Wide open, 45-40. One man to beat 30, turned him inside out, and then a great job to recover by Tyrone Colbert to save a touchdown. Reggie Bush doing it by himself, but he wouldn't have done it without that beautiful check by Matt Leiner. Matt Leiner seeing the mismatch. Reggie Bush on a linebacker. Nothing that linebacker can do. Reggie Bush running the wheel route. They drop it between the safety and the backer. Big game for the Trojans. 43 more yards for Reggie Bush. Bill Doba told us you put a linebacker on Reggie Bush, you might as well cue the fight song. That's right. That was the one time tonight that they've got him matched up with a linebacker. Out of the eye formation, Lendale White now. Quick toss for Smith. And Smith wrapped up at the 20 yard line. Nice tackle by Richard Marshall. Richard Marshall, one of those Bulldogs out there defensively battling hard all night. And you have to tackle against USC. Pat Hill stressed that over and over and over again to his team all week and to us last night. Steve Smith gets away there. He's for sure got a first down, maybe a touchdown. Nice tackle by Marshall. Eight and two, it's second down and eight. Lundell White remains in the game. Ball right at the 20 yard line. Two tight ends. Give it to White. Right on the left side. Gets into the secondary, down to the 10 yard line, and the first down. Well, Reggie Bush has already broken, as you said, the all purpose record at USC. Well, he's done more than that. He's broken it by 109 yards. 502 yards on the night for Reggie Bush. That is a Pac-10 record, and we have seen this guy do it all. 502 yards. That might be close to a Pac-10 record for a team. First down at the 11-yard line. Liner this time rolls out, looks to the end zone. Now he's in trouble, rolls away from it. Now he tucks it away and gets out of bounds at about the six-yard line. Nice job defensively by the uh, Fresno State Bulldogs and a little contact going on in the end zone. Contact in this game? Hard to believe. It was Alwan, Diles, and Jarrett jogging each other. Look at this. Diles pushing Jarrett around. Jarrett trying to get open. And then he just kind of ignores that whole thing and gets into a shoving match with Diles. That's not good. A lot of tempers out there tonight. I'm telling you. Very chippy. Glad I'm up here. Nobody here, nobody up here wants to fight me, right? <laughs> Bush back in the backfield now. Here's Reggie right up the middle, and he stay kept his feet, gets it down to the two-yard line. Should point out, USC can make a first down without making a touchdown. So it's going to be third down and a yard to go for a first down, two yards to go for a touchdown. Barry, check out the body control here by Reggie Bush kind of floating into the hole. And watch this cut and the body control. Gets his left hand down, keeps himself up, 
Falls over his fullback. Alan Goodwin eventually makes the stop, but what a runner. Yeah, not bad. Third down, and in the yard for a first down, two for a touchdown. They might have gotten the first down. I'm not sure. They did not get the touchdown. Good second effort by Lindale White. And I believe they're going to get the first down here. 20 carries, 287 yards, and two scores for Reggie Bush tonight. Boy, that was close to a touchdown. Very close. And Lindale White hasn't really had the opportunities tonight to go off. Hard to get into a rhythm when you're a big back with the other guys getting so many carries. And when Reggie Bush is hot, how do you not give him the football? But it's been tough for Lindale because a big back like that, you've got to feed him the ball. He's got to get into a rhythm. He's got to get hit. He's got to go forward. He's got to wear out those linebackers. Hasn't had that opportunity tonight. They're going to measure for the first down here. View this also, we understand. It's a first down. And we understand they are also reviewing this. It's close to crossing the plane. It's hard to tell because you can't see his legs in that pile. You never know what's going on. So they'll take another look. The question, I think, I don't think they're asking, is this a fumble? The ball did come loose, but I'm, I'm quite sure he was down by that time. The question is, is it a touchdown? You see him surging forward, and his legs are on top of a Fresno State defender. And because of that, his knee wasn't down. Maybe the elbow goes down before the ball crosses. The knees never go down. So that's a one dials on the tackle. So we'll see what uh, this decision will be. Pat Hill wants to get his defense over to talk to him. What do you think? I think it's a touchdown. Well, his legs weren't down. Let's see where the ball ends up. Yeah, touchdown. That's touchdown. The replay official has all those angles. They're going to see that the legs weren't down, the knee wasn't down, the elbow wasn't down before the ball crossed the plane. That's a touchdown. So, assuming it is a touchdown, Fresno State will have six minutes and 22 seconds, ample time. And remember, they have used two of their timeouts, but six minutes and 22 seconds is an eternity. Pat Hill just trying to keep his players in the ball game here. I believe they're going to overturn this call. I think so, too. And I think it would be right if they did. Pat Hill's not going to like it. After review, there is conclusive video evidence that the ball penetrated the goal line prior to being from the touchdown. And that's the right call. There should be no argument from the Fresno State coaching staff. So that makes it a five-point ball game. What a heavyweight fight this is. Oh, my gosh. It's not going to be stopped on cuts, I can tell you that. <laughs> They're going to go for two here. Try to make the seven-point game. You always have a bunch of plays in your playbook that are two-point plays. You don't run them anywhere else unless it's something very simple. Let's see what USC pulls out here. Wendell White is the running back. Short drop, liner, throws. No. 
Jarrett could not hang on in the end zone. Good defensive job. Now, McCauley, they've done a very nice job on Jarrett tonight. They have, and they tried to run that play where Jarrett runs like he's running a fade, but comes back inside and makes the catch. Nice defense by the Bulldogs. Five-point ball game. Fresno State gets it back. Six minutes, 22 seconds remaining to be played. White at least one has had a touchdown in each of the last 35 games, but now for USC and maintaining the streak, it's all about the D's, not the O. Well, it's always all about the O. That's true. Don't get crazy. Stand in front of the microwave. This time it's going to be Marshall. And Marshall starts to go the other way and is dragged down as he crossed the 20 yard line at the 22. Let's go back to our Aflac trivia question. Give me the answer to this one. No, Oklahoma was one. Who the other? USC, 32 straight wins, which four Division I-A teams have had longer streaks since 1900. The answer is Oklahoma, Washington, back in 1908 to 1914, right before WWI. Toledo. The Rockets, huh? Toledo. Who knew? can only watch for the moment. Paul Pinnaker's turn to run the offense. 78 yards away. Give us to Mathis. Nothing happening there. Lawrence Jackson stepping up, making the stop there. Watch out for this USC defense. They feed off the offense. When their offense gets going, they come out and start to make big plays. Very physical, very active. Play with a lot of tempo, just like Fresno State does. Second out of nine. Listen to the crowd here in the Coliseum. I haven't heard this place like this, I think, since the Olympics. Pinnaker throws, and he had a, threw a little soft pass out there, and it was almost picked by Scott Ware. There's one that Pinnaker would like to have back. Do you get a gun that ball? Jermaine Jamison coming to the wide side of the field. Scott Ware making a nice play to bat it down. Really had to stretch out to get it. Very athletic play by Scott Ware, who got his first interception of the 2005 season tonight. That was a big turnover, maybe a turnover that turned the game. One of the times it turned the game. Yeah, that's right. It's had a lot of twists and turns. Third down and nine, huge play. Out of the shotgun. Blitz comes. Pinnaker rolls away. And a flag is down. I'm sure that's going to be a hold. The ball was stripped. But they're going to say that Pinnaker was down at the 15-yard line. No, SC ball! What? And the flag, I'm sure, was a hold. Lawrence Jackson was the guy who got to Pinnaker, and the ball was recovered by Brian Cushing. Lawrence Jackson, you see him there. Defensive end, working against Denman. Strips that ball loose from Pinnaker. The ball most definitely out. Cushing falls on it. He's an opportunistic young freshman player. And, you know, I'm just amazed. They, 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 they forced that third and long. And USC's defense and offense, just the team, their ability to play within the moment in football games. They don't worry about their streak. They don't worry about the Rose Bowl. They don't worry about their ranking or who they're playing. They find themselves in a tough game. Doesn't matter if they're at home or away. They make the plays necessary to win the football game. And he certainly did it right there. Pinnaker held the ball, I think, a little bit too long there, but I don't think he could pin that one on the offensive line. You saw it on fourth and nine in South Bend, Indiana. Give it to Reggie Bush. Bush outside. He's got one man to beat. Cuts inside, takes it inside the 10-yard line. Two by the eight. Juan Dial's making the stop. He's been really involved down there near the goal line all night. Four turnovers in the second half for Fresno State. Probably the difference. An interception on the goal line. 
And Pat Hill will talk about the turnovers. He'll also tell you the Trojans' defense forced those turnovers. Yeah. And got the Bulldogs to play just a little out of their element. Second down and three. Bush again. Cuts it back this time. It was really popped. Right as he got started. Emmanuel Sanchez with help from Lewis Leonard. Here is where USC will really start getting behind this offensive line. Four minutes, 20 seconds, and counting left in the fourth quarter. Look at the size of these guys. Baker, 305. Deuce Latouille, 365. Khalil, not a big guy. Maybe their best offensive lineman. Fred Matua, an emotional catalyst, and Winston Justice. That's the big draft pick off the line. These guys, they play like five fingers on a hand. It, it's no good just to have one good player on your offensive line. They all have to play together. Pat Hill was effusive about Ryan Khalil. At a 10 yard line. So now, the field goal team will come out. Marcus McCauley, Tyler Klutz turned that play back. The Bulldogs still hanging in there. But well, now they're going to have to make a big play. Still hanging in there because Reggie Bush getting the ball over and over again between the tackles doesn't always work. He'll dance around, he'll lose some yardage. That's what happened there. I'm sure a lot of people wanted to see Lindale White there pounding the ball behind that big offensive line. We just showed all their weights. Big field goal here. Oh, absolutely. 26 yards. Fresno State very good at blocking field goals and punts. Not going to get this one. It's on its way. It's good. Huge field goal. Stretches the lead to eight. And young Mario Danello out of San Pedro, California, really stepping up tonight. Three field goals he's had, all of them good. 25, 31, 26 yards, not long ones. But check out Pete Carroll watching his young kicker. Yeah, San Pedro, California, you know, down the street from the old piece. Yeah, I was going to say, the home of uh, Petros Papadakis and family. Yeah. Nobody lives with me, though. Solo, Barry. You're liking that, aren't you? That's right. <laughs> Watch TV as late as I want. Cartoon Network. Stay up. That's right. <laughs> FSN, of course. Stays on a loop. Well, it's still not over for Fresno State here. I mean, they're... Oh, no, they're hanging in there. Touchdown and a two-point conversion away from sending the game to overtime. 306 they, left. They are on their heels offensively, though. No question. USC's defense has gone on the attack mode. They've pinned their ears back. The defensive ends are starting to win one-on-one -on -one matchups with the tackles. But, I mean, Fresno keeps coming back in this game. 3.06 left. Do they have one drive left in them? I, I think they do, but will USC allow it? It's going to be interesting. I think they're going to need a big play right here on this kickoff. Their yeah. special teams have come up big today. They kicked it away from Jennings last time. Drive on the ground. Somebody's going to pick this up. It's finally picked up. Oh, what a shot. It was Pasco who picked it up. Bear Pasco. And it was Malaluga who made the stop, and he really stuck it. Ray Malaluga, big hitter, got a lot of closing speed. Puts his dome on the kidney of Pasco. Pasco did well just to tuck that ball away. He didn't want it either. They tell you, you know, if the ball squibbed and it's coming with some momentum, let it go through to the return guys. That one was coming too slow. Pasco had to pick it up. So now they start at the 28-yard line, and there's no tomorrow. 302 remaining in the ball game. They need eight. Penninger throws into traffic. Ball is caught. And did the Trojans take it away? If they don't allow this, it's going to be a very quick whistle. It was Ashton who took it away. They're going to give him that catch. Calling Ashton Boy, bewildered. I don't know. Former walk-on, a senior at a Mission Viejo, California. You be the judge. Ball comes over. 
it's Fernandez and Ashton. Uh, Pretty close. I can see why they gave it to the offensive guy. Clock ticking down, 2.18. Pinnegar, now he throws the other way. Came back off his primary that time, on first down. Ashton making the tackle that time, and now they'll move the chains. Spock will stop. Remember, Fresno State has only one timeout remaining. One timeout left, two minutes, 11 seconds. They've got their first down, so they've already got a little bit of momentum. Let's see if they can keep it going, but they are going to have to get the ball downfield eventually. Remember, they need a touchdown and a two-point conversion just to tie this thing. USC is going to call a timeout. Here is the Kyocera play of the game, and it was none other than Reggie Bush making that jump stop on the sideline and then taking it to the house all the way across the field. You see play. that a lot in high school, you know? You see that stop on the sideline and then a guy coming all the way back across the field. You don't see that a lot in Division I college football, especially against a team like Fresno State. but. You don't see a guy like Reggie Bush every day either out there running the football. No, he's had a huge day, made one mistake that uh, cost his team a touchdown. Two mistakes, actually. And personal foul on the other kickoff return. That's right. I don't forget mistakes. <laughs> I'm sure Pete Carroll won't either, but I think he'll be forgiving if USC wins this game. You know, I get a lot of emails. People wonder what that 619 is, you know? See that thing? I know what it is. You know what it is? Yes, the area code. Yeah. The area codes are a big deal these days. I know they are. I believe Fresno has that good 559. They do. Yeah, that good 559. Little known around the country. But if you know somebody from Fresno, you see that 559 on the caller ID. You know you're getting a call from the agricultural breadbasket of the world. Well, that's very true. I mean, they've got that green V on the back of their helmets that they wear that uh, stands for the Fertile Valley. San Joaquin Valley. Quite sure they're going to say that. Are they saying this timeout was called before that last play? I think they are, so they're not going to, instead of having a first down, USC called a timeout before the play. How strange. Very strange. So again, it's second down. I don't think they put any time back on the clock either. In trouble, and here's the screen. Look out, it is. Almost intercepted. Very close to an interception by Cushing. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today. Start saving because it is. I mean, it is. All about the O. No of course question. it is. No question. Fresno's offense down. deflated. Are they deflated now? Got to have a play here. They did put time back on the clock, incidentally, after that USC timeout. But they did put the first down back. Blitz comes. Pettiger throws. Missed Fernandez badly. Fernandez wants a flag. He's not going to get it. Now Fresno's down to its last hurrah. Very physical defense being played by Josh Pinkard, who was a nickel and then a safety. A guy that hits a lot of people and then ended up playing corner just in the last few weeks. Might be the best corner on USC's team. Very close to Fernandez there. Forcing the throw, baiting the throw, and then right up in the grill of Fernandez. Here's the game right here. Fourth down. They've gone for it twice already tonight and have made it both times, but this is one that they absolutely have to have. Four-man rush. Pinnegar, now he's got to get rid of it. Does. And it's caught by Rivera for a first down at the 40-yard line. Nice job by Pinnegar. He could feel the pressure, knew he had to unload the ball, and finally found Rivera his outlet at the last minute. Fresno stays like Madonna. Every time you think they're done, they get a new out, comes out, and somebody buys it. <laughs> Resurrecting themselves. <laughs> Reinventing themselves. You get rave reviews I saw in the paper this morning. And oh, them. don't start I brought it up, so. Pinnaker throws to the sideline, caught by Fernandez, pick up a five. Fernandez gets out of bounds, 146 remaining. Ryan Ting 
defending for USC. And right now, the Bulldogs doing what they gotta do, getting first downs, using the sidelines. They saw their lives in this game flash before their eyes. They played a great game. They did. Pulled it out on fourth down. They're still alive, second and six. Spread it out, slot left this time. Penninger straight back. Now he throws, little clear outs, caught this time by Rivera. Rivera at the 40, breaks the tackle to the 30 to the 25, and out of bounds. <laughs> and whatever you think, they're all done dancing. They find one more go round. And it's been Rivera here on this final drive for the Bulldogs catching the ball out of the backfield. There you see him. That's an outlet. That's not a called play. Henniger wanted to go downfield, couldn't do it. Finally gets it to Rivera. Rivera right by that USC team box, taking it to the cheerleaders. The Bulldogs have life. Only a minute 37 left. That's plenty of time. Oh, yeah, world of time. They need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Trojans trying to hustle somebody out of the field here at the last minute, and they do. Now, let's see. Whistles blow, and going to be a timeout called by Southern California. Because they didn't have the right personnel on the field. And it will remain first down. The ball at the 25 yard line. It just will not go away, will it? They won't go away, and what can you say about how impressive Pat Hill's team has been tonight? Coming in here, and I don't think anybody would dispute. USC has got better players. They have very good coaches. They're well coached, very good players, and they've won 32 straight football games. They are the monster of college football, maybe one of the best programs ever with what they've done in the modern television era. They've been nothing but special. Fresno State has come in here and taken the fight to them every play, just when they have an opportunity to give up and everybody would say, well, you know, hey, the Bulldogs, they played great, they came down, they deserve the accolades they get. That's not good enough for them. They want to win this football game, and they are playing this football game to win. And they still have a chance with 90 seconds to go. No, they do, absolutely. And Pat Hill, I'm sure if they do lose this game, Pat Hill will not consider this a success. Even though his team has absolutely played their hearts out and played the number one team in the land, not just this year, but last year, too. Just to a standstill. We say it all the time, there are no moral victories, but, I mean, what can you say about the way they play? It's been everything great about football, the way they played tonight. And the way USC has answered it. And they're still breathing. First down at the 25-yard line, 137 left. Out of the gun. Four-man rush. Pinnaker steps up, looks to the end zone, into coverage, intercepted. Intercepted by Bing. Bing going to come out with it. He's at the 15, trying to take it to the outside, the 20. Now he's got some room at the 30. He's to the 40 and out of bounds. And finally, this one's in the books. It is in the books. They went for it all, trying to get Williams, threw it into double coverage, forced the ball in there. Darnell Bing with the inter interception and then with a very flashy return, a high step and cutting across the field. Let's see what happened here. Ill-advised throw. Just an ill-advised throw. Darnell Bing making the play and staying up. Probably would have been better served to take a knee, but took it out and got an extra 20 yards. Big physical runner is Darnell Bing. And Darnell Bing will be our Cooper Tires defensive player of the game. A couple of picks tonight. USC just made big plays when they needed to. They played like champions. They did play like champions because they didn't come into this game flat. They didn't come into this game underestimating Fresno State at all. It was just a great football game by two great teams, two great football programs. Fresno State has one timeout it can use. Leinert will take the knee. Take the knee. The clock will wind down. I don't know if Fresno State will use this last time out or not. Well, it's been an unbelievable football game. Unbelievable. And it's what we expected. I didn't think it would be a blowout. I mean, you knew it was going to be hard to see USC 
go down, I mean, that was going to be pretty inconceivable with the way they've been playing and the offensive weapons that they have and on defense, how they've gotten better. But uh, we knew it was going to be tough. But I didn't think that Fresno State would just continue to arise, you know, every chance they had to give up. I mean, nobody would have argued with, you know, the effort they gave even in the first half. And look, at they take it all the way down to the fourth quarter. They're still not going to be happy with that. That's absolutely right. It's that one ill-advised pass, a couple of ill-advised passes, actually, by Paul Pinniger and uh, Fresno State. We can say it here. They have every reason to be proud. And likewise, USC really showed the character of champions to come back. They trailed. Fresno State got back in front, and USC came right back again. And that's what the number one team in the nation is expected to do, and they delivered. You see the respect between the two coaches, Pat Hill and Pete Carroll, very different parts of the state of California, Los Angeles and Fresno, but the same kind of heart in both teams. Both of them played like champions tonight. Huge day for a great running back, Reggie Bush. I'm sure he feels that he has a couple of things to apologize for despite 23 carries, 294 yards, two touchdowns, and 513 all-purpose yards. And still, the Trojans need a little bit more than that. They had to have a couple of big defensive plays, and they got them. USC, 33 straight victories. One win from the Rose Bowl. They got UCLA in early December. They're going to have a bye week. Fresno State's going to leave a little deflated, but they got a lot to be proud of, too. I think they do, too. And both these teams, as we said, are going to be back and back strong one year from now. And uh, Fresno State would like nothing more to come back down here and play USC again while they played their hearts out tonight. 50 to 42, the final score. USC wins it for Petros Papadakis and Jimmy Watson. I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody.